I'd like to call the January 9th Sammamish City Council study session to order. Um, first, we will have public comment. This is an opportunity for the public to address the council. Three minute limit per person or five minutes if representing the official position of a recognized community organization. If you would like to show a video or a PowerPoint, it must be submitted or emailed by 5 p.m. the end of business day to the city clerk, Melanie Anderson, whose email address is manderson at sammamish.us. Please be aware that council meetings are videotaped and available to the public. Uh, first, I have Mary Wichter. Hi, my name's Mary Wichter. I live at 408 200 8th Avenue Northeast in Sammamish, and I got three minutes. <laughs> um, so stormwater code amendments after last night, I wanted to talk about drainage review. Critical drainage areas in 2017 have yellow areas so that are landslide and around lake areas that are blue. The other difference is, is they are also sloped differently. So I think it makes sense on my suggested edit at the bottom to say, you have a review if you're in a critical drainage area with slopes of less than 10% or 500 square feet or more. If it's more than 10%, that would be consistent. Please do not increase the zero square feet to 500 square feet. For example, Beaver Lake here, um, you can see the blue area. I didn't count those lots, but just the pink lots, there's 130 parcels, and if you added 500 square feet each, that gives an acre and a half of stuff that you would just exempt from drainage review. <coughs> I think that's a problem. Also, NPDES requires for um, drainage review, new, sur new impervious surface replaced or new plus replaced. The Inglewood changes were 5,000 instead of 2,000 square feet, but they're now being proposed for only new. So that means you have to check for existing square foot, like the house footprint, added gravel, porches, sheds, removed trees, before you would allow any 500 square feet, because this is cumulative impacts even within a single lot. Here's a real life example, it's the same house, the lower picture is with a, a lawn and the trees, and years later they have a lot of pavement, concrete and gravel, the house was built in the 80s, it's a quarter acre on R4, obviously has too much impervious surface, so you need to look for existing replaced, plus new if it goes over 2,000 square feet, require a drainage review, and also check the capacity, operation and maintenance of any existing drainage for that lot. For lid outreach, there were some very fine words added here, but it's only for subdivisions. I don't understand why this can't be given to individual lot owners or people in unplatted areas or people that are building or doing remodeling. For the tight line, a tight line threshold going from 500 to 1,000 square feet is not the size of the house, it's the footprint. Um, you can have a multi-story house with a basement and garage like this could be a 1,500 square foot house and you can also build larger homes by doing the drainage review. There was some code added by um, staff for the, about the 2001 date. That should be deleted as uh, uh, Mayor Malchow had suggested. I'd also like you to keep the tight line at 500 square feet. So instead of what's written there where the box is, you do less than 500 square feet of new impervious surface plus all existing impervious surface that were exempted from tight line from before. That's your second check you need for too much impervious surface. For critical drainage requirements and core requirements, staff only wants to um, not allow exemptions from two or nine. You should also put five in that list because that's erosion and sediment control. And you should never really do an exemption in these areas based solely on the size of the project. And also do not allow lid to be feasible near slopes or slides. <clears throat> For flow control and water quality, we have problems. And if you continue giving exemptions and exceptions up to the 5,000 square feet for King County, you are gonna have problems. There's a nice city habitats video called Solving Stormwater you can see online. It shows very simple water quality treatment met methods so that salmon can survive. And we need to look doing those because we need real action and steps. Lake Sammamish is polluted and I'll wrap up here. We have fecal coliform bacteria, tissue PCBs, dissolved oxygen and phosphorus problems. Um, it's in the comp plan. You also, NPDES says you have to deal with all lots regardless of size for flow control. And then we need to have a steep slopes map. This was done for Tamarack, this was done for Inglewood. We need it for the whole city. Steep slopes are not just in landslide hazard areas. They can be anywhere. And um, we really need to take the time to review and study this. That's all I could get in three minutes tonight. <coughs> Thank you, Mary. Wait, I got a question. No, oh, so do I. Melanie, can you send that to He didn't hear me talk fast enough. Can you send the PowerPoint presentation to the council? Thanks. You are deputy mayor. Um, can you ex explain to me your rationale as to why 
around the two lakes, Pine Lake and Beaver Lake, it would be zero for drainage review and on the landslide hazard areas, it would still be 500? What's the rationale? Well, the way the code is written, it's actually zero for all of them, but right the emergency surface water ordinances, there were five of them, they said let's use 500 square feet instead of 2,000 for the sloped areas. And then the critical drainage area around the lakes, one of the reasons that you wanna do that is they're sensitive for phosphorus and even a quarter mile away, if somebody puts water in and runs it, it can have problems. So you, um, pretty much Beaver Lake and Pine Lake are pretty built out. You're not gonna have a bunch of new big projects. Right. So you don't want your little projects to cumulatively add up and cause problems. And the difference is around the lake, you can do lid and infiltration where on a landslide hazard slope, you probably can't. So it doesn't make sense to do it yeah. by square footage, it makes sense to do it by slope, and that was suggested by council okay. last night as well. Okay, thanks Mary. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Nope, seeing none, we will close public comment. Um, the first thing we have on our agenda this evening is um, commission applicants. And so if you are in the audience currently and are going to be interviewing with us, I would ask that you all move out into the hall so that it's fair for everyone and Everyone else's you questions. A book. <laughs> <laughs> you can all get to know each other really well out in the hallway. <laughs> They're gonna all watch it on the web. So. Did you give the order? Do they know? Uh, no. So I think she, they, she emailed it out. Okay. There was an email that went out to all the applicants. To to just go out in the hallway. That way you don't hear the questions and. Yeah. Unless you look it up on the on the web. <laughs> I think Melanie is going to call them back in. We're going to start with the Arts Rolling Commission. The TV <laughs> <in>. <laughs> sure. I forgot about that. That's true. Did, didn't last year we one. do something about yeah. that? Did we not televise? <sighs> Are you ready for me? Um, I think so. I don't know if Mel is Melanie coming back in or she's not. She must have sent. She okay. No, so I think okay. We're, we're good. Is the microphone on? All right. So, oh, yes, it is. Um, <laughs> if you could just give us um, your name and just a brief introduction, and then council will probably ask just a couple okay. questions. Okay. My name is Margaret Rosenau, and I live in Sammamish, two one eight zero one Northeast Fourth Street. Um, I am reapplying for the position at commission for another four year term. I was uh, a volunteer for one year and I did one term before. Uh, my background is um, I was born in the Netherlands and I've lived here 37 years. Uh, I am a retired college instructor in early childhood education, family life and um, parent education. I taught preschool teachers how to teach and had let uh, preschoolers appreciate art. Also, I wrote a paper in the 1980s about uh, children and museums that the Bellevue College used for several years in their programs. I'm a world traveler, so I've seen a lot of art in the world. The Art Commission is a little bit different in Sammamish than it is in other cities. We are not an advisory board. We are an actually working committee. We have done a lot of work ourselves. Um, as you noticed, Quite a few of us have gotten the, the um, uh, President Volunteer Service Award. I got mine in nine, 2015, the bronze one, and in 2016, the silver one for working for the Art Commission. Uh, I've been involved in many of the programs, and I have taken upon myself to push permanent art in the city of Sammamish. I know several of you are new members of the council. The old members know a lot about it because I've been here many, many times asking for um, money <laughs> and other things and showing them art. Um, I have been a project manager for the gates They're at the, at the um, comments down below, and I'm sure you have seen them. Uh, at the moment, I'm working on a sculpture a proposed sculpture to be on the bottom of Inglewood Hill Road, and uh, we're in the process of that, and the previous council uh, granted us $50,000 towards that. I'm also in the process of making a book binder 
to have all our permanent art pieces in there so people who come to the council here or in the, the building here can see what we have and know the background about all these pieces of art that we already have in Sammamish. And then also I'm planning to do uh, something on Facebook showing the public what we have for permanent art, what the background is and what we are proposing. And if you have any questions, let me know at the moment. Council have any questions? I'm not seeing any. Okay, well, thank you very thank much. You. Oh, yeah, we, oh we do. There we go. <laughs> Council Member Ross. Hi, Margaret. Um, you've traveled to over 77 countries, I see, in, in the month. That's fabulous. Um, it's now 98. 98. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that was the old application. In, in those travels, is there anything that you saw that inspired you that you would like to see in Sammamish? <laughs> There's so many things, I can't <laughs> even start it. No, Once in a while I sent the rest <laughs> of the art commission uh, a little blurb. Back when I was in Dubai, just last time, something just very small that really stuck with me. An artist had made some sculptures with wood carvings on the wall, which was a nice something design. But if you had the light from the bottom, it came like a um, shadow, completely different. Amazing. You know, who thinks about that? And of course, you can see the Rembrandts and the Renoirs and all these things. <laughs> um, every country has something different. And since I was born in Europe, when I talk about permanent art, I really would like to have something that stays like 800 years here instead of torn down in 30 years and start all over again. So I'm really talking about I'd like to have a real permanent art. Our programs are fantastic. And I see different programs in different countries too. Um, and we can adopt some of those. I've seen in the Netherlands, for instance, in a small town, um, big four by eights, and had people put art on there. And then they had an art walk or a bicycle ride on the art or a car drive going from one place to another and seeing what it was there. Which were, that was not officially permanent art, but it is temporary art. But it inspires people. And I think when you have that feeling of awe, uh, that is what you get when you see art all over the time. And we should have something like that in Sammamish. We have fantastic programs already, but we need to add more permanent art too. Um, and I'm the one that's fighting for it. Okay. Thank is that you enough so much. answers? I Perfect. can go on Thank to you. the times. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. And you may stay in the room now if you'd like. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, or do we want that? Do you want that? Okay. Yes. I'm going to hand this down. Um, well, before the next one comes in, Council, I would suggest limiting questions since we have so many applicants to get through tonight to two to three max from the Council. We'll push. <laughs> Hello there. So nice lady over there, uh, I can't hear very well, okay. so she gave me this doodad to stick in my ear. Great. It's pretty cool, now I can hear Great. all of If you. you just want to give us a, a brief introduction about yourself and your interest in the Arts Commission, okay. and then we'll maybe ask a couple questions when you're done. Why, sure. Great. My name's Lou Gopal. Um, my wife, M Michelle, my wife and I have been up in the Sammamish Plateau for to about 22, 23 years now. We, are, we live over in Rock Meadow Farm. I don't know if you know what that is. But um, um, I am a, an immigrant. Um, I was born in Manila, and um, my mom was Spanish and Filipina, and my dad was Indian from, actually from Karachi, but <clears throat> he was Cindy. So when the partition happened, they moved over to India. So he's considered an Indian. But I was, uh, I was uh, educated in American school in Manila, and I came over here in 1962 um, and got married and stayed. And uh, I'm a naturalized citizen from 1966. So it kind of gives you an idea how old I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, my background is, um, I have a BA in, in business. Uh, I've been I'm retired from Boeing, uh, 27 years, and uh, since then I tell you it's been just wonderful, crazy wonderful. 
my wife and I have done a number of projects, uh, one of which is um, uh, a documentary, f film documentary that we did, um, uh, telling the story about Americans who were interned in a Japanese concentration camp in Manila, because Japan occupied Manila for three and a half years. And uh, my uncle happened to be in that camp, and uh, uh, he died of starvation just two weeks after being liberated. So that story really caught me. And so we spent two years putting this together. I did the uh, um, uh, writing, the editing, uh, even um, uh, did the music, the background music. So my, my interests are in the arts, uh, music especially. Um, I've been playing, uh, I started out playing the violin when I was four. And, and now I play violin, piano, flute, sax, sing, <laughs> guitar. I do everything. But music's my forte. I love music. I love the fact that Sammamish has a venue for that at the, at the lake and so forth. And I'd like to see more of that happen. Um, let's see. What else should I have here? Uh, we, both of us are part of the community and we're active. Uh, my wife is currently um, in conjunction with the, uh, the Sammamish Heritage. It's, they're trying to save the Providence Heights mm -hmm. land over there. So we're right kind of in the middle of that. Um, but we love this community, and we love the fact that it's, it just looks so clean, so neat. It's also part of a huge uh, diversity, and uh, being as I, I am also part Filipino, part Indian, part Spanish. Uh, I love to see this whole melange of people in here. Um, so it's exciting for me to see how this place has really grown and it's beautiful, beautiful place. Um, okay, uh, anything else I wanna add? Just hand, hand a second. Three, 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 three. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, good. Let I'm open. See, let me see if there's any questions from the okay. council here. Council, any questions? Oh, uh, one, thing, one thing I did want to mention. Uh, why do I want to do this? Um, and I, I just want to say that being involved in the music and arts for most of my life, I'd like to have the opportunity to nurture and help artists in our community, uh, especially our young citizens. So I want, to be, I want to continue to have venues for them to display their arts. Thank you. I think we've got a couple questions for you. Oh, you do? Yes, oh, okay. Council Member Valderrama. Oh. Yeah, uh, thank you for your application and your dedication and service to the community, first of all. Uh, I am, I mean, we saw the music, the arts, your diversity uh, being highlighted, but the one that you mentioned about the documentary that you had made there before, that's something I don't see our Arts Commission to date having done much of, of the film media. Are uh -huh. you also looking at exploring or interested in championing of that course. type of issues? I have a, I have a uh, studio at home and I continue to produce videos and film. Um, uh, I also created several documentaries uh, for my wife's um, uh, nonprofit organization where they would support, um, uh, oh, support um, um, orphanages in Bolivia. And we even had Penny Legate do an, a voiceover for, for my video. Oh, so. But even some of the documentaries on the Sammamish Symphony, the sculpture that was mentioned by Margaret or on some of the other work uh -huh. would be interesting. And we have a channel that sits blank most of the time on wow. uh, TV 21, so that would be a great use. That would be, I'd be very interested in that. Terrific, right, thank yeah. You. Mm -hmm. Council Member Moran. Can you give me some ideas of what you would do um, to bring more of the music uh, of your background, some of the ideas that you might have to bring uh, into the Arts Commission? I'm a huge advocate for music. Um, that paid for part of my college. So um, could you tell me some of the ideas you might have to bring that to the Arts uh, well, Commission? Well, I, I didn't know I was gonna be asked this question, so I'm just gonna hit off the top of my head. Um, I know quite a few musicians in the area. I do open mics in the east side and stuff. And um, uh, I can see perhaps having a, a venue where uh, there would be an open mic, um, 
may be inviting people on a weekly basis. Beautiful campus over here, uh, especially in the summertime. Uh, something like that. Also featuring kids, because uh, we have so many talented kids on, on our hill. And uh, I think that'd be a great venue for them to just kind of open up, you know, instead of, you know, some of these kids are wonderful musicians, but they play at home. They don't get the show off, so to speak. So that didn't, just off the top of my head, that'd be an idea. Great. Lou, thank you very much. Thank you. You may stay in the room if you'd like. Thank you. Yes. So our format here is just give us a brief introduction to yourself and then we might ask a few questions and great. My name is Barbara Gersa. I'm a current member of the Arts Commission and um, I am um, a very firm believer that the language of the cultural arts are what help build a community. And I have been very fortunate to be able to have that as my mantra for my whole professional career. And I do, I believe here in Sammamish, we have just as much opportunity as anywhere with all the different cultures that um, are represented here. So my um, position um, on the Arts Commission now is to curate the exhibits that are in, um, in what we call the, the Commons Gallery here. And I have loved doing it and I love the space that we have, and I am very grateful for the new lighting that is there. I have championed for that for a few years, <laughs> and um, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to serve my own community um, in, in this capacity. I guess I, the one, if I can just kind sure. of add a couple of things here, I'd like um, to say that what happens out here with these exhibits is, um, really is an opportunity to engage with very different communities here. Over the summer, we had um, photographs from what we called summer postcards, but some of them were from um, the 4th of July celebration here. And that was a real opportunity to connect with the Sikh community here in our, in our very own community. Those, those photographs were taken by one of the leaders of that community. And I don't think I will ever forget the reception um, that we had for that. It was a very moving and very important um, connection to make. This is their city hall as well. So the exhibit that is up now, um, Keiko Hara, is a nationally known um, uh, artist, and I'm very, very pleased to have her work here. <clears throat> She's known um, in, from Japan to New York to um, Europe as well, and her work will come down on the 19th of this month um, and will be replaced by um, some encaustic paintings by an art, a, a local East Side artist, Willow Bader. Um, and she celebrates the traditions of life. And so I would love to invite you to come to the opening on the 25th, Thursday the 25th from six to eight. Um, it's an opportunity to meet the artist and for the artist to it, it's a venue for the artist to bring her supporters as well. That's what we can offer. They provide our, the artwork for us for free and, um, and are willing to leave it here for three months. So we provide a, um, a reception um, for that as well. So I'll leave it at that if you have questions. Uh, Council Member Moran. Oh, light left on. Council, do you have any questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Sid, if you'll just uh, give us a minute or two about yourself and then we might ask you a few questions. Sure. Uh, so my name is Sid Gupta. I currently serve on the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, position four. Uh, I got my start in the city of Sammamish uh, volunteering through the uh, Washington Native Plant Society's Native Plant Steward Program in 2014. 
And through that program, uh, I've been doing restoration with, along with other Sammamish stewards in Ebright Creek Park. Uh, since 2014, we host uh, roughly monthly work parties uh, there. And I've also uh, participated in work parties, helped lead work parties in uh, lower, uh, lower Commons Garden. Uh, there's a native plant garden down there, and there's also that extensive restoration done in the, near the wetlands. Uh, additionally, I, am, I currently serve as the president of Sammamish Friends, which is a local nonprofit. Our, um, sorry, uh, our focus is on community engagement and um, environmental stewardship. Uh, some of our highlights through that group, we helped run the, or we put on the 2016 Kids Mud Run uh, down in Lower Commons Garden. We're hoping to do that again uh, this year. And uh, we helped uh, co-sponsor the uh, city council um, forum uh, last August, last September, um, along with the East Coast Mammoth Reporter and Platopians for Peace. Uh, some of my focuses uh, since serving on the commission, uh, Originally, what I, when I got on the Parks Commission, my focus was on community gardens. I was really interested in getting a second community garden in the city. Um, at that point, I think we had something like 50 or 60 people on the, uh, on the wait list. Now I think it's, it's down to 40, but that's still, I think, enough to, to support a, a second garden in the city. So that's something I'd like to continue to work on. Um, additionally, uh, a native plant salvage program. Uh, King County's native plant salvage program uh, shut down last year. So I think it would be, uh, a great benefit to the city if we could do something here. Um, we have, uh, our, as native plant stewards, we have been hosting our own uh, salvages in conjunction with the city. So we contact developers uh, who have a site that's ready for development. We go in, we, we salvage plants. And at the moment, we have to then take those plants and store them at one of the stewards' houses. So that takes up land. And then, you know, they also have to water plants on their property or we have to arrange that ourselves. So it would be really great if we could get some city space um, with, with some sort of regular watering. Um, especially, I, I've heard that in 2019, the city's considering hosting a Sammamish-specific stewardship program in partnership with the Native Plant Society. So that's gonna be 20 to 30 additional native plant stewards. If we have a framework for a strong salvage program, I think we can make a lot of use of that. And um, thirdly, uh, plant identification signs. Um, there is, I mentioned, a, a native plant garden in Lower Commons, um, just south of the um, community garden there. And that was put in in 2009. And um, so that's almost 10 years, and there still is a, a, a very limited amount of plant identification there. So if you walk around as just a community member, you may not even know that that's a native plant garden that's meant to, to showcase some of our natives. Um, what signage is there is, not necessarily accurate because you know over the years plants have moved around, plants have died. So I'd, I'd really like to see a focus all, all throughout the city, but especially in that garden and and some of our other restoration projects where we're making an effort to put in native plants. So th those would probably be my, my big three. Great. Council, do we have questions? Council Member Valderrama. Hey, Ted, thanks for applying again for the position, your service that you've given. I, I'm curious, you mentioned a lot about the gardens and the restoration. This year will be a significant year for Sammamish and the parks area. One, because of pressing demands on the fields that are coming up and reduction of field time that we have on as kids want more. Also, you have the urban forest management plan that's kicking off. How do you see the parks commissioners responding to those changes? And where do you see the priorities for this year? Uh, so for field use, um Personally, I'm, uh, we, we have talked about, uh, there's a lot of discussion about an indoor field house somewhere in Sammamish. From the information that I've been presented, uh, as I've been on council, I don't necessarily think that's a good way for us to go. I don't think that's a wise way to spend city time and resources. Um, I think, uh, based on what I've heard, my recommendation would be to focus on converting our natural turf fields to synthetic fields, uh, especially installing lights where possible, because that, increases usage um, and extends usage hours. Um, I know in the past, this has been really contentious. I live in Klahani. I know there's been a lot of pushback in Klahani in the past about installing synthetic turf and lights there. From what I understand, the lights technology has evolved, so there's not as much bleed. It's very, the light is very focused on the fields, so there is not as much disruption uh, to neighbors, but sound is still a concern, so you have to make sure that um, those usage hours are very constrained and you work with the, those communities. But I, I think natu uh, natural to synth synthetic conversion is probably the strongest step for um, extending field usage. 
As for the urban forestry management plan, um, this is personally I'm something I'm really excited about. Over the past years, a lot of uh, sustainability issues have been brought up to council, and a lot of times because of the workload, the answer has been, oh, we'll address that in the urban forestry management plan. So there's a lot of things that have been punted, and um, because of that, I think this needs to be a very comprehensive plan. And I, I think as a commission, as a whole, we've felt like we would like to, to have a strong role in helping develop that. No. Um, in fact, I believe a few of our uh, commission members have volunteered to uh, take a look at that, be involved in some of the, uh, the uh, contractor interviews. So um, I, I, I would like to see, what I would like to see out of that uh, program is an increased um, commitments to tree retention. I know we have a very strong tree retention policy, but that's just kind of one piece of it. I'd like to see you know, some planting standards, uh, how that ties into stormwater, um, kind of bringing everything together. And, and that's a big ask, but I think that's, that's kind of the nature of the plan, is it, it needs to be this all-encompassing all holistic um, project that, that takes into account how we develop our city and has a very strong vision of what we would like Sammamish to look like and how we get there. Thank you. I don't see any more questions, Sid. Thank you so much. You're welcome to stay, too. Thank you. Make sure Melanie realizes we uh, are ready for the next. I see her standing there. <laughs> there she goes. Thank you. Good morning. Glad to see you. Can you see King Bridge for me, please? Good evening, yes, right up to the podium. Um, maybe you can just give us a minute or two about yourself and your interest um, in the commission and then we'll sure. likely ask a couple questions afterwards. Well, thanks for the opportunity uh, to be here. I am interviewing for a park commission position. I guess what inspired me or incented me to be here this evening was about a year ago I met with Don Jaron? Jaron, yes. Jaron. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a nice conversation and I told him I have a, a personal philosophy about giving back. And even though I've only lived in Sammamish for about six years now, I just feel it's important to do something for the community. And when Don heard my story, he said, why don't you go down and look into the park commission? <laughs> so um, that's why I'm here. Uh, background, I'm from Connecticut originally. Uh, one of my first jobs out of graduate school was actually as park and recreation director uh, for the town of Middlebury, Connecticut. Uh, I was in that position for approximately four years, four or five years, and I suppose at that time things were happening in my life where my career took a slight turn and in getting into business. Uh, as a, for, again, for four years I was park and rec, um, director. It was a political appointment position uh, back in the municipality, um, in that particular municipality, and it offered some challenges, obviously, above and beyond, which normally might be associated with Park and Recreation Administration. In approximately 1993, I, prior to moving west uh, to Southern California, I lived in a town next to Middlebury, which was called Woodbury, Connecticut, and in the town of Woodbury, um, I suppose it might have been more politically influenced than anything else. I was encouraged to become a park commissioner and I held that position for about a year. So prior to that, in a nutshell, uh, I was a baseball and basketball player growing up. I spent a very, very brief time in the New York Yankee extreme minor leagues <laughs> and have always and have always looked at sports and education as just I think the f my foundation in growing up and I think it's a good foundation for most other people particularly young people so I think that's great uh, council do we have questions uh, deputy mayor Cornish yes thank you um, can you tell me what you think was the biggest thing you learned in the prior experience overseeing the park to answer your question, you know, I, in anticipation of tonight, uh, not only did I go back some of some old notes and books and that sort of thing, but I looked at research of what was going on 
in parks and recreation in general. And almost in every municipality or in every study that I read, it's insufficient funds was the lead in. Uh, insufficient funds for land purchase, insufficient funds for building of facilities. Um, and I, I, I think about that and I've been fortunate because when I was park and rec direct director as well as commissioner, insufficient funds wasn't really a, a factor that involved. And I think it was more just developing interest, educating the public about what um, recreation administration, what recreation activities and programming can do to develop, to, to round out people. So it really wasn't so much insufficient funding, it was really more in educating the public. I don't know if I answered your question completely. No, I, I, I appreciate that, and I think that's a good answer. So I don't want to follow on that. How would you educate the public? Well, what I did, um, I have a graduate degree in Park and Recreation Administration. And I say that with a little bit of reservation because in the course of my business career, I found that to be labeled as the jock might not necessarily help me. <laughs> and uh, I think in hindsight, I think I probably made a wise decision. But one of the things I learned, I do recall from classwork, and I certainly did this as a Park and Rec director, was that I assembled collected and analyzed an interest survey of the citizenry where I lived. So if we're going to, my belief is that if we're going to provide park and recreation programming, it really should start to a large degree on what does the public, what do our citizens want? What do they expect? And obviously you can't give, you can't, you can't give everyone everything that they want, but at least it sets a course of direction. So I would say that's probably the the most important slash fa big factor that I, I recall. Thank you, Nikesh. Thank you. Great. I'm not seeing any more questions. Thank you so much. You're welcome to stay in the room if you'd like. I had a busy day and dinner's waiting for me. I, so it's I okay. hear you. Go get it. <laughs> you, you're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> you have some for us? <laughs> 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 Hopefully it's the latter. <laughs> Good evening. We're just gonna take maybe uh, about five minutes total and just maybe the first uh, few minutes, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in the commission and then we'll probably follow that up with a couple questions. Okay, well Great. my name is Sarah Hoopis. I've lived in Sammamish for about two and a half years now in Washington for three. Um, I have two little kids who are out there with me, eight and six. And um, honestly, that's been a big reason why I, I saw people on Facebook saying, we need people to apply for the commissions and like, you know what? Yeah, I wanna do this. Um, I think a big part of, a big question that I've had is why do I have to go to Issaquah? I live in so, like the south end of Sammamish. So why do I have to go to Issaquah to, for my kids to play basketball and for my kids to do all of these activities and soccer? And it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm like, Sammamish is double the size of Issaquah and we have the facilities. We have all these great schools and gyms and parks. And I know they're put to use by different programs, national programs, and I feel like there are so many people within the community that we could give those jobs to, uh, young kids, high schoolers who could take that time to interact with the youth and you know spend some time in the community and not have to go outside of the community to do that. And I, it's, it's different for me not being from here, having the two school districts, I feel like it kind of tears the town apart. I'm working now in North Spamish with two people in Lake Washington School District and we're in Issaquah School District and it just kind of blows my mind the difference in the two. It's like, you know, we go to Redmond, we go to Issaquah and I feel like we need to create more of a community here in Spamish. and I know everyone's doing a lot of work to do that, but 
I feel like having a solid rec program that's sponsored by the city of Sammamish rather than you know I-9 or all of the other organizations that do it now could make a huge difference. Okay. Council, questions? I'll jump in, sure. Deputy Mayor. <laughs> so uh, thanks uh, for the application. So I'm kind of curious, so what would you en envision that you would want to put in place as a commissioner to address the concern that you have? Would it be more uh, activities, more parks and, and rec fields, or well, what's I, the thought? I think that Sammamish has amazing parks. Some of the best parks of anywhere I've, I've ever lived. Um, I, I love the parks. I don't feel like they get the use that they need to. My son plays Little League, and we've never played a game at Pine Lake Park. I don't know if it ever gets used. It's a beautiful park. And oh, so, it's being used. Well, and, and I'm like, I'm sure it is being used, but I, I, I don't know but why. You yeah, yeah so. I've never been there. So, um, I, and I have to be honest, I, I just opened a business last week, so I've kind of been consumed by that. And this just kind of came about in December. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, a lot, I'm probably a little unprepared, but um, I definitely see like what Issaquah has. The city of Issaquah, you go in, there's father-daughter dances, there's all the, the basketball program. They use some, you know, Sammamish schools to play those games. And I just feel like if it was a city of Sammamish organization, and I have to admit, I don't know what it takes to put that together, but I'm willing to find out <laughs> and do the work that it would take to, you know, help that come to fruition. But I just, I'd like to see this, the, the name Sammamish on, whatever activities that our kids are participating in. Okay. Great. I'm not seeing any more questions. Sarah, thank you. Thank You're you. welcome to stay and listen if you'd like. Or I'll take the kids I, to dinner. I hear you. I've got kids the same age. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I am not an applicant for the Parks Commission, but I did want to let you know that Lane and Croft is uh, not here. Okay. Thank you. No holy cards. All right. So. Wow, what is it? Real time again. Yeah. All right. You guys actually listen. <laughs> Good evening. I think we've moved on to the next group. Yeah. All right. I think we're on, I think we're on Working to the on plan, here. planning commission. Planning commission. So what we're doing is just a couple minute introduction sure. of yourself, including okay. your name, because we're not being told who's walking in. Because why? I'm sorry. Pardon? I, I didn't hear. Because oh, why? If you could introduce yourself. Okay. We're, not, we're not being told who's walking in, okay. unfortunately. Um, and then we'll just ask maybe a couple questions on sure. the back end. Outstanding. Are you ready? Yes. Close your arms. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So uh, my name is Lou DeVita, and I submitted uh, my application for the uh, Planning Commission. I've been in Sammamish for 19 years, almost 20. Um, raised my family here and have been a very happy resident for a long time. So can I give you some background? Yes, or absolutely. I, just, I wanted yeah. to make sure that you yeah, had. Yeah, please. When I submitted this, I, I included my resume and other information. I don't know what you have available, but. We've got it all, yep. Okay, perfect, great. Well, so let me just share that um, I've been a, an active member of the community for as long as I've been here, uh, volunteering in various capacities for uh, schools and sports and junior achievement and other, uh, other things like that. Um, and I still am very active in that capaci capacity. Um, so professionally, um, my background, I, I uh, you know, have an undergraduate degree in business finance. My master's is in, uh, is an MBA also with a finance emphasis. I've uh, worked in project management, program management, uh, real estate, lending, um, operations for ever. Um, so I've got a lot of experience, you know, working with large groups and negotiating contracts and agreements and working with uh, various constituents and um, stakeholders to solve problems, to take care of business and to get things done. Um, you know, I, I think that we're at a very interesting time for our community and I would love to, you know, play a, an active role in where we go from here. I think we've done such a great job 
uh, as a community, you know, uh, getting to this point. Uh, I think uh, the, the, I mean, it's just been remarkable to see the growth and development and, and how we've come so far as a community over the last 20 years that I've been here. Um, and I look forward to, you know, a, a terrific, you know, future. I'd love to be part of that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hornish. Lou, thanks for the application. Sure. So um, on your on what we have in front of us, it says you've attended several commission meetings or watched them yeah. and as well as council meetings. So the meetings you were at, what items came up that piqued your interest that you see are, are something that you would like to get your teeth dug into? You know, there is, I mean, what I enjoy is, is the transparency and the, the opportunity to engage other members of our community. I think it's nice that we have uh, people that participate in the process and always listen to different per, you know, perspectives and points of view. Um, and I think you know, there's a lot of interest today around growth and managed growth, um, sustainability, transportation, infrastructure, and the things that I think we've got in front of us today. Um, all of those are interesting to me. All of those I think are really, really important. Okay. Uh, Council Member Stewart. Um, yeah, so uh, perfect segue, you talked about engaging with the community, uh, and as I understand it, um, for the most part, the um, planning commission meetings are as heavily attended as our city council meetings are. Um, so how uh, have you or how would you plan to actually get that community engagement since uh, the community doesn't always come to us? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. I, I mean, I think that social media is so, you know, it's such an important, you know, place that people engaged today and I think, you know, to the extent that we can share with, you know, uh, groups like Nextdoor or other, you know, other social media outlets, there's ways I think to get the message out. Um, what I know is that everybody, my experience here is that people are, we're, we're blessed to have a community of people that really care and are involved, but they're also very busy. I mean, that's, that's part of the challenge. Um, so, you know, making it easier for people to participate um, in other outreach events that aren't necessarily just here. How else can we engage people um, in ways that, that they, they can be comfortable with, uh, you know, in, in other areas? There's other ways to do it that don't involve just sitting here. So. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions. So okay. Lou, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome to stay if you'd like to stay and listen. Okay, thanks. Hello there. So our format is just to kind of introduce yourself to us, um, give us a little bit of information about what um, created your interest in the commission, and then we'll ask a few questions on the back end. Okay. So the floor is yours. So my name is Nathan Chada. I live uh, on uh, 1724 223rd Avenue Southeast. Um, and my interest is uh, really I don't have any agenda or view or anything like that, it's just, just to serve and get engaged. Um, I'm somewhat of a kind of process guy. Uh, I work um, from, like I look at situations from that angle, whether or not the guidelines and whatever meets the process or not. Uh, and for what I do, I work in finance field, um, have been for the last nearly 20 years, and so I'm used to looking at um, uh, proposals um, and looking at kind of the cost benefit side of the things and also uh, looking at all the different uh, elements that are intangible uh, and uh, trying to kind of weigh in and make recommendations on that basis. Uh, so that's kind of my background. All right, uh, so I noticed on your background that you've been uh, affiliated with a lot of the public agencies, uh, Woodenville, Bellevue, uh, now Metro. How do you think those would uh, help you as, as a commissioner for the Planning Commission? 
Um, well, I mean, I understand the process um, from uh, the public engagement process, uh, you know, how the meetings are carried forward, Robert's rules uh, of order, and I'm used to um, making presentations to the, you know, our set of fire commissioners that when I was a budget manager there at the Woodenville uh, Fire District. Uh, so I know kind of what the expectations are. Uh, so uh, from that perspective, I think that experience in public uh, sector helps me. Uh, at the same rate, um, I also don't marry myself to strictly a public sector background. I mean, I do have a private industry background, so I do tend to look at things more from an open view and uh, different perspective and make sure that all opinions are considered before uh, coming to a conclusion. Basically. Okay, thank you. Council Member Stewart. Uh, yeah, so um, how would you be able to uh, kind of gather input from the community so that you can make sure that uh, the entire community was getting represented uh, in the decisions that you were making? Well, um, uh, there are a variety of different ways. W you know, you can obviously engage in uh, dialogue with your neighbors, seek some perspectives uh, outside of what you might otherwise have. Uh, you obviously have this public engagement platform where people come make comments on different topics. Uh, you also rely on the staff of the city who interacts with the public. So in, in effect, they're also kind of capturing some of that uh, in their um, uh, presentations to the commission, uh, presumably. Um, there's probably some uh, engagement with some independent consultants, one would hope, uh, in a lot of the different proposals or development type ideas or economic uh, um, elements that are engaged uh, or that are party to planning activities and long-term and com a comprehensive growth plan for the city. Uh, and then you also kind of weigh in some of the environmental effects and those type of things uh, to make sure that you're looking at things from a balanced view. Um, so more input is better than less is kind of my general view. Uh, and more perspectives lead your diversity of opinions kind of tend to lead you to a more objective outcome. Uh, Council Member Roth. Thank you for coming um, and talking to us. I saw in your um, written responses to the questions that explosive growth has created a shortage of uh, affordable housing. Do you have any thoughts on what, what are some of the ideas or options you would consider to move forward on that challenge? Well, I mean, um, so uh, some of the ideas uh, would come from the actual proposals. Uh, so when somebody's bringing a proposal and if the council uh, and, you know, with the policy, that's uh, that's kind of your job. You guys set the policy and the direction for the uh, long-term growth. And what level of affordable housing do you want to build into the, uh, in, into the community and the long-term plan? And so m in my view is commission is going to work based on that policy setting and guidance, uh, but provide recommendations on different ideas. Um, mixed use, uh, you know, projects uh, uh, which incorporate some of the um, low, low income or affordable uh, housing uh, as a proportional share of their overall project uh, could be one element. Uh, other element could be uh, when you're bringing in uh, different development uh, type ideas, how close they are uh, to some of the transit options uh, because in, uh, oftentimes uh, somebody's willing to pay a little more in rent if they don't have to uh, maintain, you know, cars and insurance and some of those expenses. So th there's a lot of different creative ways to kind of get to an outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, thank you. You're welcome to stay and listen if you'd like. Otherwise, thank you so much for All your right, time. Thanks. Matthew, Hello. we're just going to let you give us an introduction to yourself, sure. and then we might ask a few sure. questions on the back end. Do you need my address? No, okay. <laughs> but your name for those <laughs> that don't know who you are already. <clears throat> so my name is Matthew Petrich, and I uh, am 
have filled out the last few months of uh, Frank Blau's position on the Planning Commission, so I've been there six months. I'm back for more. Um, what, what do you want to know about me? I guess there's lots of new faces, so welcome to all you new, uh, new, new folks on the City Council. You need to schedule a photographer. <laughs> yes, well, uh, done. Coming. <laughs> um, Matthew, maybe you can just give us a little bit of information about what spurred your interest in the okay, commission in the first sure, place, because I know sure. you were an applicant originally. Yeah, sure. Um, so. Okay, so I, I grew up here um, back when it was nowhere, and um, contented myself to kind of grumble about what I saw happening uh, around here. and. Um, I think I'm part of maybe a larger movement of folks that realized we have to do something. You know, when the, the national political climate kind of got polarized and nasty, um, I didn't want to sit around and do nothing. So this is uh, the way I can contribute to my community. Um, I, I'm, I'm interested in planning. Um, I, I have a degree in law and I studied environmental law, so I have this sort of affinity for these types of issues that come before the Planning Commission. And I live here and I care, and I, I, I actually want to be part of where we're going, even on an advisory capacity. <laughs> so, council, questions? I'll be uh, there. Deputy Mayor? So with your law degree, <laughs> 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 since I have one as well, <laughs> uh, uh -oh. has that helped or hurt with your serving uh, in the interim period here? Uh, I think I think I know more than I actually do, so it probably is, um, uh, well, it, it provides me, I think I have a, 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 an interesting sort of background perspective. I've been out of law for a number of years. Uh, I have to be very careful that I don't presume that I'm a, an expert on any particular area of law now, so I, I, I try to step back from those. Nobody ever is, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know, I don't know, that's not an easy answer, because I, I think the, the education and the experience I have it, it has sort of informed the way I approach issues and the way I think about things, but at the same time, I'm wary of pretense. Okay. Council Member Stewart? Uh, yeah, so, um, how do you uh, how do you make sure that um, you're representing sort of the entire community? Obviously, you've lived here a long time, and so you've seen a lot of things yeah. yourself. But how do you uh, make sure you get all that input? I, I can't represent the entire community. I think primarily I represent me. Um, you know, I, I have uh, opinions and thoughts about things, and um, I don't know that it's my role on the commission to represent everybody. I I, th I think ideally the seven of us that sit on the commission. Um, represent different segments, and uh, we come from different backgrounds. So collectively, we represent hopefully a nice smattering of the folks that are here. And you know, we get we get input uh, from from public. And um, like you, we take that in under consideration when we are making our recommendations to you. So um, I I don't. I'll throw in one question too. There was one thing about your work on the Planning Commission that you can change, not necessarily your work specifically about, but maybe just the function of the Planning Commission. What would you change? I haven't been on it long enough to say anything terribly intelligent, but I, I think <laughs> one, one, one of my great hopes is that um, the there are, we, we get a lot of public input. People put a fair amount of time into preparing testimony to sit in front of us. We, we um, spend a fair bit of time getting ready for the meetings and then we make recommendations. So in an ideal world, um, the city council is giving that heavy weight, I think, uh, it, it, because of the process that it's gone through. So that would be what I would wanna see as a, a, a robust relationship between the commissions and the city council um, and one of, of you know respect and trust and not necessarily deference, but um, knowing that we've, we've done our best to advise you. Great, I'm not seeing any more questions. Thank you so much. You're <laughs> welcome you. to stay and listen to the rest if you'd like. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to hear what I did wrong. I'm, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Mark. Um, the format here is just give us a little bit of information about you that we don't already know, <laughs> um, and then maybe your interest level in the Planning Commission, and then we'll probably ask a few questions on the back end. Okay. 
Well, that's unique because I don't know that there's too much that you folks don't know about me. <laughs> um, maybe I'll just do kind of a standard. I was born in the Midwest and started working for a construction firm and ended up traveling around the country, doing lots of different things for that firm and ended up here and moved to the plateau in 1997. So we've lived here actually going on almost 21 years now here, what became Sammamish. So we were, um, when I say we, my wife and I were um, part of the folks that voted for Sammamish and we're excited to see it grow. I was just talking to somebody about remembering when the city hall was next to Ace Hardware over in the strip mall. Um, I think this is a little bit nicer here. So in terms of my background, uh, just kind of as a reminder of my background professionally, I work for a large commercial construction firm. I've managed all kinds of different projects over the years, different parts of the country, um, from million dollar renovations here and there to the biggest project I ever managed was a half a billion dollar project, the Providence Hospital up in Everett, Washington. And of course a project like that um, involves a big team and lots of subcontractors and lots of challenges, lots of interaction with the city of Everett. So I have a lot of uh, uh, interesting stories and background working with them. And of course, over the years, I've worked in Seattle and Bellevue and many other jurisdictions. Um, have also gotten involved in lots of uh, kind of preliminary planning, design build, um, entitlement process work on different projects as we work with some of our partners to develop large projects. So I have quite a bit of background in the process of taking an old facility and creating something new or taking a green space and creating a new building. Um, I will emphasize as I've done all along, I don't build houses, we don't build houses, nothing to do with anything residential, it's all commercial. And that was the reason, as many of you probably know, why I ran for city council and why um, people encourage me and I'm interested in participating in the planning commission because I have a pretty deep background in certain parts of that, particularly in being able to help folks in the translation of development and construction um, when developers come in and speak, developers speak what they mean, what the process should look like, um, what we should be doing as a community to hold folks accountable, what kind of rules are reasonable when people say that they can't do something, is that the truth or not? And that's, that's for any kind of project, um, housing projects as well as the other big challenge which when I walked in here tonight, there was about a five inch puddle right at the front door. So storm water is a big challenge for the city, um, maybe even at the front door. So uh, I have a lot of history and a lot of experience dealing with all kinds of different people, attorneys, my favorites, Tom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a beating tonight. <laughs> um, designers, contractors, subcontractors, um, public agencies, and I believe that that experience and that knowledge can help with the kinds of challenges that the city faces with um, development, new construction, managing it right, making good choices. And in particular, the planning commission, I think it's really important that we could keep in focus that the role of the planning commission is to support the city council. So the planning commission needs to be productive, um, help the city council to vet information, ask the right questions, hold people accountable, uh, make sure that we're sometimes generating things that need to happen, not just following the lead of staff and others. We need to see a planning commission that really thinks a lot. Um, and I hope that, that the planning commission will improve in those regards. And if I can be part of that, that'd be great. Great, so we've got several questions here. Uh, Council Member Stewart. Hi, Mark, good to see you. Um, so uh, if you were on the commission, how would you help to kind of build consensus and get the, the commission to gel? Because I think, uh, you know, as the city council, it will help if the recommendations come with more than just a 4-3 split kind of thing, so. Yeah, um, in many cases, their votes tend to be pretty unanimous, the ones that I've watched. Um, but I actually think one of the things that needs to happen is, uh, the, the, and I'm not criticizing, they do a great job they do a thankless job, much as the city council. They don't get very much recognition, very peop people even participate in the meetings. So I don't wanna criticize or make the appearance that I'm criticizing in any way. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that I think there needs to be more thoughtful debate on the planning commission. Um, there's a lot of personal opinions expressed on the planning commission that that's interesting, but there should be more thoughtful, open public debate about the things that are presented so that ideas can come out of that um, and then, you know, there may not always be a unanimous decision that comes from that, but at least it's been vetted. At least there's been good discussion um, and at least the kinds of topics that they should be talking about representing all of the 64, 65,000 residents and citizens of the city. 
that's what they need to be doing. And they do a pretty good job, but sometimes um, get a little bit caught up in their own personal points of view, and that consumes a lot of time and doesn't necessarily create a lot of productivity in, on the commission. Again, I'm, I am hesitant to give any appearance of criticism. They're, they do a great job. Councilmember Valderrama. We could use you on the council. <laughs> <laughs> With that perspective. So tempting to swing at that. <laughs> Mark, uh, you had mentioned as one of the th topics that most interested you, and I thought it was interesting, you had discussed the strategies to encourage more commercial and retail development for diversification traffic. But in particular, you talked about and providing a stronger sense of community within Samaya Mission. I uh, was wondering, Given what you have just said about providing that thoughtfulness and going through, and obviously we have a town center that's under development as we speak here, in your prior experiences to try to convey and educate people as to the ability for the additional commercial and, and retail development in that town center to fulfill, as you were saying here, to provide a stronger sense of community. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. The, the the statement there was intended that uh, I've found in campaigning and also just living here, people tend to be very localized, south end, north end, their neighborhood. Some of that is good, um, but I think that town center can help create a community identity that's more singular. It also, I think if it's done correctly, and particularly that's why I mentioned the retail and the commercial, um, it starts to bring people here to the town center for a lot of different activities rather than driving to Redmond or driving to Issaquah or going someplace else. And because you create a central focus for where people can participate or they can shop or they can, a few of them will work or whatever it is, that uh, at the point where it hits critical mass will help people have a sense of this is Sammamish, right? The character of the space, the kinds of things that take place, the activities, the, the cultural and civic part of it, the commercial, they create a sense of identity. And when people have that sense of identity, I think it starts to really create a stronger sense of Sammamish as a community. Folks in Bellevue have a pretty strong sense of Bellevue, a lot of opinions, of course. Redmond, been around a long time, same thing. Issaquah has a specific culture. Sammamish, it's been 20 years, we have some of that, but I don't think, because we don't have a strong central focus of where people gather and do things, that we don't, we haven't really developed that community culture. We have a reputation that isn't always positive outside of the community, and I work all over the place, and I can tell you that that's true. Um, I think that a, a thoughtfully created town center that generates a, a sense of community amongst the citizens and residents of Sammamish can help improve the character of Sammamish as not just where the rich people live or where you go to have kids, but an important part, a large, um, great community within the group of communities, the family of communities, particularly on the east side and all around Seattle. There's no reason with the population we've got here, the smart people that we've got, the culture that we really have, diversity, there's so many good things going for us, but we've never quite achieved that community culture, that community image that we should have. And I hope, you know, in the, in the years that I still remain living here, I hope that that develops because I think that'd be a great thing for the city. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. You're welcome to stay and listen to the balance of the interviews if you'd like. I think I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. Over to you, Jeff. So oh, yeah. our process here will be just to give us a little bit of information about your interest in the commission, and then we'll probably ask a few questions on the back end. Sure. Sounds good. So <clears throat> thank you, City Council, for giving me this opportunity uh, to apply for the Planning Commission. Um, my name is Rituja Indapure, and I've uh, been a resident of Klahani for the past 15 years. Um, and you know, my family decided to move to Sammamish because of its great schools, uh, parks, and our wonderful Klahani neighborhood. Um, and since I've come to Sammamish, and I've always been involved, um, I've served on PTSA boards, uh, I've been on, as an alternate on the Sammamish, parks, uh, Sammamish Arts Commission, 
uh, and also being a director on nonprofit boards. So uh, um, what I would like to do is, you know, bring my leadership skills um, to, to the Planning Commission. Currently, I also work as a senior analyst at Costco, um, dealing with supply chain management issues. Um, so, you know, I do have that background as well. Uh, plus, I have a master's degree in um, international commercial law, which I actually don't use. So, so that's a little bit about my background. Okay. We'll open it up for questions here. Uh, Council Member Stewart. Yeah. Hi, Rafija. Hello. Um, so, uh, how would you help um, kind of make sure that the commission gels and that you can build consensus on various issues? And uh, same with Mark, I kind of ask you guys this because I know that you guys have done a lot of community outreach already uh, for your campaign. So, kind of focusing on taking that and, and kind of building that consensus. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, sitting through and, and watching a lot of Park Commission meet, uh, Planning Commission meetings, um, I think, uh, you know, everybody you know, has to be respectful of uh, other each other's opinions. I think that is very important. Um, you know, I have experience in working with teams, uh, having worked, like I said, at Costco and other companies in leadership positions. Um, I think especially when we have to reach a consensus, it's really important to listen to the different voices and to understand if there's a difference of opinion, uh, where it's coming from. Because uh, many times, you know, we are all vested in making sure that, uh, you know, we do what's best for Sammamish, uh, and, but sometimes people feel like they, they're not listened to. So I am definitely a consensus builder and uh, I take great pride in listening to people. So I'll make sure that all voices are heard and that we actually take some decisive action because I think that is something that is also very important, especially on the Planning Commission, is that we present, uh, you know, the Planning Commission is basically going to be, you know, it's an advisory board that brings in policy decisions that the council has to make. So how can we be, as, as a Planning Commission, make sure that we have clear suggestions or, you know, uh, recommendations for the council? I think that would be something that I would really focus on. And uh, just out of curiosity, how many doors did you end up knocking on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knocked on a lot of doors. Uh, me, along with my team, we ended up knocking on more than 6,000 doors in Sammamish. So talking about that, I think one of the things that I heard over and over again, which is sort of you know the top three issues that if I were to be selected for the Planning Commission, um, the things that I would like to focus on is, first of all, the urban forest plan. I think majority, you know, didn't, didn't matter which part of Sammamish I was, if it was Klahani at the south end or Hidden Ridge at the north end, everybody was telling me, where are our trees? You know, what is happening to our trees? Why are they getting cut down? So people are really concerned about their trees. And I am really vested as a citizen, as somebody who wants to live in this area for a long time, whose kids have grown up, uh, and who's met, you know, numerous citizens who really like living here to ensure that a tree canopy grows uh, and that we have a solid plan going forward to envision that because I think people are feeling really discouraged right now when they don't see trees. So the urban forest plan would be something that I would be very passionate about. Um, the other thing is the housing strategy. I think that is something that uh, people talk about a lot, and I know many of you and I have talked about it on the campaign trail as well, is that you know, it's so hard for our teachers, our firefighters, our policemen to live in the city. And, and I know right now the market is hot, so that is definitely one condition, but I think uh, living in Klahani, you know, I have seen the different kinds of housing options that we have there, and it would be great to see that all around the city and having a very uh, focused effort on making sure that different kinds of people can uh, live in the city as well with different socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hornish. So I got just a simple question that requires a simple answer. What's the solution then to affordable housing? <laughs> 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 well, I'll let Arthur decide, tell you that. I'm sure he's going to be here, you know, from Arch, so he'll answer that question in a very simple way. Great. I'm not seeing any more questions. Thank you so much, Rachel. Okay, You're great. welcome to stay and listen if you'd like. Great. Thank you so much.
right. <laughs> I have to escort this person. <laughs> um, I just wanted to point out uh, that your next applicant has applied for two commissions, and so you may want to do both interviews now or not. It's to your pleasure. Great, sure. Yeah. Think about how you could condense this. So Karen, you get more time. So Karen um, since I have a feeling everyone has their planning commission stuff up in front of them, maybe we'll do that one first. But maybe what you can do is just give us a little bit of information about yourself and your interest in probably both commissions, and then we'll probably ask you a few questions. In that Great. Case. Well, my name again is Karen Howe, and I've lived in Sammamish for 25 years. Lived and volunteered here, as a matter of fact. So on the volunteer side, I've been very active as a PTSA person and mom, and part of the reason why there's playground equipment at Samantha, at, uh, at uh, the elementary school is because I fundraised for it, for example. And so I worked on Cancer Lifeline, I helped uh, coach goes lacrosse. I brought lacrosse from the east side actually to Sammamish for boys and I've been very active certainly in, in that respect and then more recently I've been engaged with a group called um, Sammamish Friends and so you'll all be getting a, a lovely invitation to a fundraiser for that shortly and uh, run a Sammamish huddle which is an activist organization that works on things like um, trying to bring up uh, people up to speed on things like climate change for example. Um, so engaged in the community on a volunteer level, again, very active for 25 years there. From a professional point of view, um, I'm a consultant right now after uh, working for several years in the business community. So I am used to bringing recommendations forward to governing bodies, uh, researched, well-researched, well-thought-out recommendations uh, as a consultant now. So I've been a CEO, I've been a VP in several publicly held companies, um, I've launched products internationally, I've run programs internationally and lived overseas for a couple of years. So the reason why I'm interested in the, in the planning commission in specific and what I think I bring to this is because I have a deep business background, I have a deep volunteer background and deep roots here certainly in the community. So on the planning commission side, what I feel I bring to this, which might be somewhat unique to some extent, is that because I am a consultant, I'm used to bringing forth, again, these well-reasoned, holistic viewpoints into governing bodies. And I do it from a standpoint of being able to figure out what are the unintended consequences of this recommendation? How do I help the group I'm working with come to consensus or agreement on a proposal that I put in front of them? And how realistic is it to get completed? How actionable is it? How many other groups does it actually touch? How many stakeholders have been involved and been brought in early into the process and at the appropriate time so that they're able to, um, you know, have their views represented in that piece? And so I think I bring um, context and seasoning, if you will, and uh, a balanced viewpoint into something like the Planning Commission. So then maybe we can shift gears just slightly over to the, um, the yes, the human services. You bet. So just on that side, the there. reason why I'm interested in this is be certainly because of my work as a CASA kind of kicked it off. So I'm a court-appointed advocate for abused and neglected kids in the court system. But um, more than that, what this has taught me is to reserve judgment. And the way you raise your kids may not be the way I raise my kids, but that actually isn't important. My opinion doesn't matter. Evidence matters, facts matter. I'm very data-driven. And when I write a court report, I am their attorney for these kids in, in court. And I have to represent their point of view very accurately and very fairly. And so that forces you to be a really good listener. You sit back, you pay attention to what the kids are saying to you. What's their best interests going forward, certainly. And again, reserving judgment and so that you can look past things that might be difficult for others to look past, but I can because what I'm looking for is their love in the home. Is the home safe? How can I reunite this family? What services can I provide for these children so that they can be more quickly reunited with their parents? So that's one thing that I that I love doing, working with youth in that respect. And then another piece that I do is I actually teach a class 
um, for kids on how to get that first job. And I specialize in, in particular, young men who have graduated from college and aren't quite ready for the real world yet. I help them find themselves. I help them see where they have strengths that they didn't even know were possible. And so I take them under my wing and I, as I say, teach this class, mentor them, and help them get that first job. Okay. So maybe I'll open it up to questions here if anyone has any questions. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I am. Uh, Karen, thanks for the applications uh, on both sides. Um, I'm a little interested on the human services side mm -hmm. just because of your court-appointed uh, representation and everything. Right. Without any confidential information, I, 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 I'm sure you wouldn't share anyhow. But are you aware, or are, is that a need in Sammamish? There are foster kids in Sammamish, and there are classes that are appointed to families in in Sammamish. Yes. Okay. So how do, you, how do you think that background and knowledge and experience that you would bring to the human services would dovetail how, with everybody else and, and support the human services. How that translates. Yeah. Uh, I think that the way that this translates is um, in a couple of different ways. First of all, I've received a lot of specialized training uh, in order to become this advocate. And uh, this means working with uh, addiction, working with special needs, working with, and this is parent and child. So I, I work with, I have babies that are in the NIC unit and are drug addicted at birth, right? So I, I see the gamut, and, and my job, my role is to help you know be look out for their best interests. But that gave me exposure to things like occupational therapy and the benefits that that provides when you can interject it at the right precise moment, so that you can get the derive the best most benefit from it. Um, certainly, the parents' um, addictions problems. So I've been uh, exposed to a variety of mental health issues and uh, different treatment options for them, in addition to uh, just how you partner with social workers and different services to help you know, get those parents so that they get the parenting skills under their belt so that they can, again, be reunited with their, with their kids. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Stewart. Um, getting to be a routine here. Um, <laughs> uh, so you mentioned um, that uh, you are a consensus builder and you can help groups come to consensus. Can you just give us some examples of how, how you can help do that? I'm used to matrixed organizations. This is where no one, you know, you don't report to anybody, no one reports to you, you don't have a budget, but you have something you have to get done. And I'll give a specific example of when I had to build a website from scratch with no staff and no, no budget. And that website, with no staff and no budget, ended up winning two Webby Awards, which is the equivalent of basically an Oscar type of a thing for a website. Um, the way that I was able to do that is that I proactively talked to all the stakeholders, made sure I understand exactly what we wanted to achieve, by when, and made sure that we c could open book it. And by that I mean you make every part of your process transparent. You show everybody, you show your work. You do the work, but you show your work. And by doing that, I made my project the most interesting, that I had engineers volunteer to work on the code. I had other uh, content writers volunteer to do the content because they wanted to be associated with this project because they knew it was gonna be awesome by the time we were done. And we ended up uh, getting funding and financing from a corporate stakeholder that we came out of the blue that we were able to leverage, and I was very clever about how I used consultants. But beyond that, um, when you work on a website, you have to work on a strict priority basis. So it's, the website can't be everything to everybody. You have to be very clear about how you articulate, you know, your prioritization. So did you want the website to load fast? And then did you want the next thing to be that people understood what it did? And then did you want them to take an action? Well, that's a way to prioritize things. It's also a way to help move a project forward. So what I found myself in that particular role is I was cheerleader by promoting and selling the concept of let's do this website, selling it into organizations that actually had staff that could work on the project and feel committed to it. And then I shared the um, accolades that we got when we won those two Webby Awards and took everybody I could with me to New York to the award ceremony. 
because that w it was a phenomenal event and it worked extraordinarily well. But it was by me not being the person that was invested with what I thought had to happen. It was by pulling everyone together and being transparent about the entire process, about what we wanted to achieve. Councilmember Moran. First, I was shocked not to see your name put in for the parks. Well, I didn't have time. I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the submission for the um, human services came in at just before midnight, so. Okay. Um, all right, so, um, looking at both of your applications, and listening to uh, what you say for what you're saying for the Planning Commission mm -hmm. and where is you where if you were if you had to follow in one direction or the other which would you go you know I would love to do Planning Commission because I, this is such a wonderful time to be part of it because it's you're it's it's this wonderful point in time which you don't get back again where you're able to help build consensus and bring something forward as a group and make it a shared vision. An individual vision is not very powerful. A shared vision is truly extraordinary and has legs and the capacity to grow. And that's where I see what can happen with the Planning Commission. Uh, on so the Human Service- the Planning Commission. Yeah, the, on the Planning Commission. That's what I could see happening there. On the Human Services side, there's, uh, it's green, it's green fields. There's lots you could do there. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. Karen, thank you. You're Thanks. welcome to have a seat and listen in if you'd like. Good Great. Balance. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is C.J. Kaler, and as you know, I'm applying for the uh, the the commission, the Human Services Commission. Um, I live in Sammamish and have lived in Sammamish since '02. Um, uh, my wife and I, Mary Jo, uh, have three kids, and they're all got kids. So we've got uh, six grandkids, and um, two of them two of them with their parents live in Puerto Rico. Uh, one group lives in Renton, and one group lives in Lake Stevens. How did I get to this? This is the wrong room. The, this one. How did I get to this position? Yeah. How did I get here? <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a long time. I, I came to it, I think, from one of my one of my desires to do as a human while I'm on this earth. And um, I, I went to school at the University of Washington and became a pharmacist and started taking care of people, doing people care. It was a community pharmacy, so people came in, and we got to know them by first name, and we came after hours to get them prescriptions, and I was there as a, a running a pharmacy, from our own pharmacy from 72 until 2004. Along the way, I got a little bored, and I bought a second pharmacy in, in Lake Stevens. <laughs> but but that, that, that took some of my energy away. But just the care that a pharmacist gives to their patients when they come in, I felt the need to try to help every one of them, not just to give them their medications, but to get to know them as people. So uh, after I got that going and I finally retired in 2004, I got thinking, well, what am I gonna do now? And some of you know Jack Berry, and Jack got me and said, hey, you need to think about the Smamish Rotary. He says, it looks like you like to do things for people. And so I went and I joined him in, uh, in 04, and uh, I've been with him ever since, and I've done lots of different jobs with him. Uh, I have not been the president. That's the only position I haven't held. Um, I said, no, I don't have that much time, but I've done lots of other things. And one of the, one of the first things I did was to be the, the chair of the Community Services Committee. And we're the group that goes out and looks around Sammamish and cities that touch us and say, what are the human needs out there? And that was a real eye-opener for me, and it was a real way for me to get to know the people in the city and get to get an idea of what the needs were, the people, the people uh, who, who live here. Nowhere deep, as Burke is doing, on the human needs assessment that they're doing, but it was a real feeling for what we're doing. 
So uh, that fit in with what I was doing. Uh, Rotary's motto, mo uh, motto is service above self, and that fit in with what I was doing, except for being president. That didn't, that didn't fit in. <laughs> um, I've done other, besides working with the Rotary in, in our city here, uh, I've also done some international projects. I've gone to Ethiopia and given oral polio to kids there for once, and then I've also gone to Nicaragua twice where one of these villages that we support as a, as a Rotary Club to help them to get on their feet to learn how to grow their, what they're growing. And that was very interesting to meet the people there that are so poor and get to understand what poverty poverty is and, and make relationships with these people. And going back the second time was even better than the first time. Some of the, some of the quotes that I think about when people say, what motivates you? And I think I have a couple that have motivated me over the years. And one of the first ones is, a, is out of the book of Matthew uh, where it says, uh, whatever you do for the least of my brethren, you do for me. And that always has been something I have on my desk and I think about when I'm deciding about what I'm going to do. And if I get a little tired sometime, I look at that. Uh, I've seen other, other, a couple other quotes that I, that I keep in front of me that I look at. Uh, as one person, I cannot change the world, but I can change the world of one person. One can never consent to creep when one feels an impulse to soar. And when you feel like giving up, remember why you held on for so long in the first place. As far as leadership abilities, as I was going through pharmacy, uh, my, my career as a pharmacist, I also was in leadership for the Washington State Pharmacy Association. I was on their board of directors for a number of years and also was their president for a couple of years. So I got to meet with people and figure out how do you work in committee to get things done Pharmacy is kind of a mixed up profession still. They're kind of get it, getting out of it, but there's a lot of work that's being done and it's not always straightforward. And there's a lot of work that was done with payers for prescriptions that had to be done in, in very difficult situations. But that was one of the things that I've done that helped me a lot along the way. One of the things I first ta started talking to the city council in 2012, when I was looking at, the, what, at what Melanie was doing uh, with, the, with the needs you were meeting uh, for citizens in our, in our city. And I, and I was looking around us and seeing what Issaquah was doing, what Redmond was doing, uh, and what Bellevue was doing and saying, we need to have a commission that can really look at this because Melanie's already got a full-time job as a clerk. Mm -hmm. It's hard for her to do it. So I talked to him in 2012 and they thought about it, li very listening people as you are and very caring people. And then I came back in 2014 and I talked to him again. And one of the things that I kept bringing back to them was a, some words that I saw from the Redmond uh, Human Services uh, directory they have. And this, this always is something I think about. It says, when people think about the kinds of services their city offers, they often think of roads, water, and police and fire protection, but probably not human services. These services provided directly to persons struggling to meet their basic needs for food and clothing and shelter, as well as, in, as well as assistance related to employment, health, safety, and social support. Those are things that people are looking for. And as I work in this, in, in helping people in needs, I see those, those, those are real. And it says, but building, maintaining, and improving an infrastructure for addressing the continuum of human needs is as important as maintaining and improving the physical infrastructure of roads and bridges, which you're in the middle of now. Um, a city's vitality depends on the degree to which its residents and family are able to thrive. An effective human services delivery system is a crucial component of any healthy, sustainable community. I'm really happy that we've gotten to that point that we're gonna leap ahead and I have a lot of energy to, to get it going. Uh, Jesse can tell you some of the energy that I've, that I've shown in some meetings where you say, oh, we can do this later. I said, no, we can't do it later. We got on. Um, so that's kind of about me. Uh, one, I guess one extra point I wasn't gonna mention, but somebody said, you need to mention it. Mention it. And the city did appoint me as the citizen, uh, volunteer citizen of the year, just at a meeting last week. So I was happy about that. Good. Questions? Yes, we do. Let me open it up. Uh, Councilmember Moran. <laughs> Anyone else? You covered it all, CJ. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you, CJ. Thanks You're for welcome. all the work you do. You're welcome to stay in here if you'd like to listen. Thank you. Thank you.
truth. Hello. So our process here will be just to give us a brief introduction of yourself mm -hmm. and your interest in the commission, and then we'll ask a few questions on the back end. Great. Um, I'm Nashina Mir. Um, I've been living in Sammamish for the last six years, and I work at the Gates Foundation. I'm a senior uh, program officer um, at the Gates Foundation, and I'm interested in serving on the Human Services Commission because I have almost 20 years of experience in either working directly in human service organizations or providing funding to human service organizations as, as a grant maker and also in assessing the impact of human service organizations. Um, I'm an immigrant to this country. Um, I moved to the U.S. in 1998, but um, prior to moving to the U.S., I completed my master's in social work in Mumbai. And while I was a student, my journey, journey in human services began. Um, I worked for the Children's Orthopedic Hospital in Mumbai, uh, where we provided therapeutic and counseling services to um, ortho children who had orthopedic issues and their families. <coughs> um, I also had a block placement at an organization that provided services to children who were victims of child sexual abuse. So we did workshops in schools and educated children about child sexual abuse, and we provided legal services and counseling services to them. Uh, after completing my master's, I worked at an international um, organization called Child Fund International, and we provided health and education services to uh, children and communities around the world. I, I also worked at a large health organization in India that linked grassroots health organizations across the country. After moving to the U.S., my journey in health human services continued, and um, I worked at a domestic violence shelter uh, in Texas um, where I was a case manager and uh, I provided um, referral services to victims of uh, domestic violence and uh, referred them to appropriate resources within the community, whether they were housing resources, legal resources. Um, I really studied the Violence Against Women's Act and advised clients um, on the legal options that were available to them. Um, and um, following that, I did my PhD uh, from University of Pennsylvania. And um, while I was doing my PhD, I continued to engage with human service organizations, community-based organizations. Uh, and over the last 11 years, I've worked with various foundations. Uh, I first worked at the Lumina Foundation for Education in Indianapolis. And it's a national foundation that provides um, uh, post-secondary success-related mm -hmm. uh, services to low-income first-generation students. So their focus is on uh, providing college access, post-secondary success-related services. Um, and I was there for five years and worked with a number of education-focused organizations. I provided funding to them, and I also assessed their impact. So I have... Uh, deep expertise in measurement and evaluation, which I think is very important to assess the effectiveness of uh, human service organizations. Um, at, the la at the Gates Foundation, over the last six years, I have worked with a variety of organizations, organizations that focus on early learning, um, on health service delivery, family homelessness, and a number of other issues. And I think that um, I would really like to bring that experience to bear in, in this position. Uh, and I think I can use that experience to uh, um, provide guidance on effective grant making practices, mm -hmm. on um, uh, any other human services related concerns and issues. Um, I think uh, I, I can help the city of Sammamish to determine uh, human service priorities based on the experience that I have had in the past working both directly in human service organizations and also in funding such organizations to strengthen their capacity. And when I'm talking about strengthening capacity, I mean um, looking at the entire organization, their board, their governance, um, whether they have the right financial management systems in place, 
Um, do they have strong measurement and evaluation services in place? So we look at the entire organization, and um, I have experience in building the capacity of many nonprofits. So I would love to answer any questions that you may have. Sure. I have one actually, because I think on your application, something got cut off, and so we didn't get what your vision for human services in Sammamish was. So um, I think that um, any city, um, even if it's a more affluent city, should have really high quality services for vulnerable populations, because even the most affluent communities have uh, families that are struggling with unemployment, with homelessness. Um, there might be individuals who have substance abuse issues um, or mental health issues. And unless the community has strong resources to, uh, to really help these individuals to combat these major challenges, I, I don't think that the overall community can thrive. A and that was my reason for applying for this uh, position, because I feel that um, you know, even though we are a fairly affluent community, there are people who are experiencing challenges, and um, I think that I can use my experience to help to strengthen uh, human services uh, in, in the city of Sammamish. We've got a couple more questions. Uh, Council Member Ritchie. Dr. Mir, thank you. Outstanding resume, and thank you for the time you've put in to be here. Um, my question specific to what I foresee, what I've come to know as a kind of a silent epidemic in our community is domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about how you would reach out to members of the community to, to talk about that issue? That isn't something people really, it's not talked about, it's just, it's very quiet, it's, it happens behind closed doors, but I look at that as one of the most pressing human commission, the, 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 the things that we can deal with as a, as a city, that's something we really need to reach out. Do you mm -hmm. see that as an issue? And based absolutely. on your experience, what do you think you can you do? You are absolutely right about the fact that it's a very unspoken issue, because if you look at the statistics on domestic violence, they are highly underreported, because people don't talk about it. So I feel that, um, but on the other hand, it's not, it, it's unlike other areas that you know we are concerned with because uh, you have to maintain a very high level of confidentiality and a certain level of secrecy in order to protect the victims of domestic violence so the domestic violence shelter i used to work in in texas we did not advertise our address we didn't want abusers to turn up on our doorsteps so we were really really private so we had a hotline which uh, and which we promoted a lot and that and, and we you know so some of the victims of domestic violence we knew were uh, Mexican women who were immigrants this was in Texas so there was a large Mexican population so we did outreach to them and we we talked about the hotline a lot and advertised the hotline not the actual address or, or the name of the shelter per se uh, and we took measures to really make sure that uh, the victims of domestic violence were protected. I think that's all of our questions. Great. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome to sit and stay and listen if you'd like. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for your time. Good evening. So our format here will be to give us a brief introduction of yourself and your interest in the commission, and then we'll ask you a few questions on the back end. Sure, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Anika. Um, I'll give you my personal uh, layout in two different formats. One is my per professional, pa professional path and my personal uh, uh, commitment to the community. So uh, I'm an engineer, bachelor's in uh, computer science engineering. I work with Microsoft and corporates. I started a company, cloud-based product company, sold off 
invested in real estate, I'm a realtor and an uh, investor. So that's a personal, professional part of it. Uh, going to, through the, my personal commitment to the community is I have been involved with uh, various nonprofits. I was assistant executive director at uh, Sold AG House Foundation, which was branded as uh, Invested, uh, which provides grants to various uh, schools, public schools in Seattle. And uh, it has now um, started giving grants to uh, East Side, including the Lake Washington School Districts. So I was involved with the fundraising and providing grants to all the schools there. Then uh, I was also in the board in the Lake Washington School Foundation. I was the board member there. And uh, I was last year, I was in the Lake Washington PDSA Council. Uh, I was chairing the spring fair for them. So it's more of a community connection that I look for and um, uh, irrespective of the kind of, so I've done parts of grants, I've done involved with the events, I've in, been, uh, been involved with the different aspects of the community. So that's what drew me to this uh, Human Resource Committee. Great. Council, anyone have any questions? I don't have to sit back. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so um, appreciate your, your interest in this. Um, just trying to kind of look more at uh, kind of what your um, visions are or kind of what you think the, those priorities are. What, what would you focus on or have the commission try to focus on? I heard that this is a very newly formed committee and there, there was a task force that was and there are people who are in this uh, interview who were in the task force. So I feel that there, there's some brickwork that's already done. Still, it is a very new and kind of a, um, open ended energetic com committee which can, uh, can absorb new thoughts and people with diverse. It's, uh, so that's what kind of uh, uh, propels me to uh, that this would be a great committee to start up with. It's a uh, it's, uh, it has the flexibility as well as some groundwork is already there. So I feel there is a whole lot that needs to be done. I have been involved with more structured kind of uh, uh, nonprofits, like uh, as I mentioned, Soul and Deji Has Foundation, which was in, uh, which was rebranded as Invested, which is 30 years old, a nonprofit, and which has uh, been providing grants to all the schools in Seattle School District, and now it has to the Lake Washington School District as well. So it was a very, very structured kind of. And uh, uh, then I was also involved with the foundation board, Lake Washington School Foundation board, which was, which was not that structured, but at the same time, it was not very new. It was like it had a background of six years or so, providing grants, giving grants, or fundraising. But I believe this would be a, a newer, still newer kind. A committee that is being formed. So I feel that uh, th there is a knowledge, there is experience at, at, at the same time, no formal structuring is the best that uh, can be there. Okay. Deputy Mayor Hornish. <coughs> on your uh, application, there was a question of what are your top three areas of interest, which kind of to follow on with Councilmember Stewart's question. Your first one was mapping interest to requirement. Yes. Can you give me a little more understanding of what you were thinking in that and how you would go about doing that? Yes. Um, uh, most of my, uh, my professional path, as I mentioned, from the corporate to the current real estate, realtor and investor, and my, uh, and my personal path, uh, it, there has not been a set path I have there. It's always been, uh, this, is the, this is the end goal, and these are the resources you have. How do you connect and what all resources that you can generate from, uh, from the community, from the network that you are associated with, or that's probably why uh, that mapping is, um, that word mapping came in, that uh, you need to connect the dots um, with all the resources that you have. So. Thank you so much. You are welcome to stay and listen if you'd like. Thank, Thank you. you I time. appreciate it. Thank you.
people that were saying no to me. This is absurd. Good evening. So our process tonight is just to give us um, an introduction to yourself, your interests in the commission, and then we'll probably ask a few questions on the back end. Sounds good. My name is Jody Nishioka. Um, I'm interested because I really believe that human services makes a great difference in our community for our community members, particularly the most vulnerable in our community, and that's really important to me. Most of my, my career for the last 25 years has been in human services, working on behalf of communities of color, low-income communities, and a lot of and other vulnerable communities. <clears throat> I've been a human services planner at both a state or, um, s at the state of Hawaii as, and as well as the city of Seattle. And so I've been working in government agencies doing human services, figuring out what are the greatest needs in the community and how to give out the funding so that we can accomplish the goals that um, our departments, the various departments and the s councils have stated as um, our objectives of what we wanna achieve. And so I have a lot of experience in that from the government sector, but I've also worked in many nonprofits over the years in the areas of um, domestic violence, immigrant rights, um, immigrant services, youth services, early childhood education, and a variety of other uh, working with nonprofits. I currently am an executive director of a nonprofit that provides legal services to nonprofit organizations, so I currently am in a lot of contact with a variety of nonprofit organizations statewide, and I'm very familiar with how nonprofits work and how they serve the community and the importance. Um, why, the reason I'm interested in working on this is partly to be part of my own community. Um, that's certainly one of the driving forces, but I really do believe that um, Sammamish is really changing, our demographics are changing, and because we live in an area that is uh, relatively uh, wealthy in terms of the community, um, there I do know we do have, I think, a fairly invisible um, community that are, um, that are vulnerable. And we, a lot of times we don't see it because we, we think we're such, we're, so many of us are doing so well. Um, but I really, it's important to me that those folks are supported and I think that's where the role of the city government can play and the human services um, department and commission and council um, can really make a difference for those in our community. So that's why I'm interested in, in being on the commission and believe I can bring my experience that way. So quick question, you had mentioned on your application um, you wanted to apply for a one-year term, and we have several terms, one, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. Are you married to one year? I'm not married to one year, but I would like one year. I kind of want to make sure it's a good fit. Um, also really busy because I'm already sit on a no another nonprofit board. Um, I'm the board president of another nonprofit board as well as being an executive director of a nonprofit, so I am pretty busy, but um, I'm not... I'm not opposed to doing more than one year for sure. I just, that was, would, would have been my preference, but great, I'm open to it. Uh, Council Member Ritchie. Uh, thank you for your time and <coughs> your application for being here today. Um, I'm not sure if I'm speaking with your best perspective or what is your bias. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, it, we would want to make sure we talk to the service providers that are already out in the community who serve this community and are really familiar. Those are the folks on the ground doing the work. Um, east side, um, there there are, I, I actually used to work for um, East Side Domestic Violence Program. Um, and so I know that there, we, we, there are organizations that serve that both on the immigrant side as well and serving communities of color. Um, in the state, King County, and specifically serving the east side. So I think we would probably be best to outreach to those folks. Um, in terms of reaching victims, um, it's not safe to go out and speak to victims for their own safety, so there's a lot of those types of concerns. So really be working with the providers that are really on the ground and have those connections and um, are doing that work. Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor Hornish. Um, I noticed on your resume that you started off in, in practicing law and then 
uh, over some time moved into the more of the social it's, work. Sure. <laughs> and you did some legal and now you're doing a little bit more of le yeah. oversight of legal. Sure. Right. Was that a, did that just happen or was that a conscious decision? In, in um, I, yeah, I started out as a, you know, a lawyer, I got out of law school, practiced law. Um, I went into corporate law for a little while. I really didn't like it. I really did find my passion serving domestic violence victims, immigrant refugee, um, particularly immigrant women. Um, but I also did a lot of uh, legal services to uh, low-income communities and communities of color in a variety of ways. But domestic violence became sort of my niche okay. um, in terms of my practice. Um, then I started to work for domestic violence human service organizations that were serving the victims, um, doing legal services. And then I started to get into a lot of the administrative program planning doing some fundraising, that's how it is when you work for a nonprofit, you start doing a little bit of everything. And that's where I really enjoyed that work, being in the community, working on behalf of the women, not necessarily doing the legal work, but doing the program planning and trying to figure out how are we having our greatest impact. And so that's how I kind of got into doing more of the human services nonprofit work. And from there, it just moved on working at human service departments in the city, along with working with nonprofits and ultimately, and yeah, so kind of meandered right, through, but. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other? Hey, Jody, thank you Hi. for applying. Sure. Uh, you had made something that was, or you made a comment about the invisible portion of our community, and that's actually something that in the past people had talked about our health and human services contributions have more often than not been going outside of our community and trying to see how can we direct those more to that invisible portion that's in that people know exists in there. And I'd be curious if your work with Seattle and other organizations, if you have ideas on how we can flush those out to the surface more and be able to direct more into those organizations and entities that mm -hmm. can serve those people here in our city. Again, I, I do believe that there's a lot of wisdom in our own community, um, particularly in grassroots organizations that are really serving those communities and understand those communities. I think oftentimes we look to the government entities and sort of these large organizations that might be based in Seattle or sort of statewide organizations, and certainly they have um, offices, local offices in different parts of the community that have expertise. But I think it's really important to look at our own community and the organizations that really um, are working here, um, and they know they definitely know what is going on. They are the ones serving those those people. Um, and I would want to, I would say that we would really need to tap into that and recognize that as opposed to looking at say, uh, I mean, as opposed to looking at some of the larger organizations that might not be here specifically around Sammamish, you really need to figure out who is doing the work here in Sammamish because they are the ones who do know. Um, and even things like, I think a lot of the schools, the school district probably, when you look at going to, into our schools and looking at uh, um, talking to the counselors, talking who, who are they referring to, what are some of the issues that we are f facing locally, um, those folks who are out in the community doing the work really do know, and it's really being able to tap into those folks. There is a lot of wisdom with the folks who are just in the community doing the work. So that's... Thank would be my, yeah. Okay. I'm not seeing any more questions up here, so Jody, thank you. Thank You're you. welcome to stay and listen to the rest of the applicants if you'd like. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. you for your time. Hello there. So our process this evening is just give us a little bit of background on yourself and then your interest in the commission and then we'll probably ask you a few questions sure. on the back end. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zainab Ibrahim. Um, so professional background, um, I am a communications and training specialist at Seattle Children's. Um, my educational background is in education as well as international studies and um, history. Um, and then you said interest in commission? 
Yeah, just your interest yeah. in the patient itself. Um, my big interest and the reason why I wanted to apply was just to get involved in my community um, in a significant way. Um, something that's really important to me is inclusion. Um, so how do we really bring everyone to the table and engage in productive dialogue? And so that's something that I'd really love to be a part of. Great. Um, do we have questions from the council? Deputy Mayor Hornish. What is it, or how did you get involved with uh, communications uh, at children, at, at children's and, and why, I guess? Yeah, so I started my position there um, focused on cultural competency training. Um, I'm and sorry, a, say that again? Cultural competency cultural training competency, okay. for the organization, so the hospital research and foundation. And a part of that was creating um, like online modules for diversity and inclusion, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, and so really that's where the communication piece first started. And since then, I've been there for two years. Since then I've become kind of the expert for my department when it comes to like website main maintenance, newsletter, um, creating um, PR um, publications for um, the organization as it relates to topics um, of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And I was uh, an undergrad, I worked for the school newspaper, so I had had a little bit of experience sure. um, <laughs> for four years um, at NC State, so it started there. Gotcha. Uh, Council Member Ross. Thank you. In your um, questionnaire, you list your top three areas of interest for Sammamish. Number one, mental health. Yeah. Number two, inclusion. And number three, educational opportunities for all ages. Is that also the order of importance in your mind, or if not, where would you think Sammamish should put most of its attention in? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, it wasn't in order of importance. Now I'm thinking I should have put it that way, but so I think I would start, um, I think inclusion would be number one for me, um, and I think Sammamish would benefit from that. Um, I mean, there's just an influx of people coming into the, our community from all different backgrounds, um, race, religion, um, and I think that it would be really great to um, incorporate them so that it's not just diversity but inclusion as well. So that's number one. Um, I think educational opportunities for all would be really great um, as far as early education and the older population. I think often they are kind of pushed to the side and I'd really love to see some initiatives um, to include them as well. Um, and then mental health, I mean, I think that's huge. I think we're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of research that shows, um, you know, some mental health um, concerns in our adolescent and youth populations. And so I think that's something that there needs to be dialogue around and some initiatives to uh, work on improving. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, Council Member Stewart. Yeah, um, so I love you talk about inclusion a lot. What are some of your ideas, um, specifically yeah. how it relates to the health and human services in terms of yeah. what you're thinking in terms of sure. inclusion or what you're worried might be missing, those types yeah. of things? Um, I really like the idea of dialogue, like just really involving people in conversations and getting to know one another. I think it's really... Um, you know, it'd be great to do something like an international festival, and I think that's cool, and who doesn't like, like, you know, different types of foods, but I think it's important for there to be like a deeper level of understanding of one another, um, and, and so I think just, um, you know, educational opportunities, like cultural competency training, not that I'm putting a plug for myself, but I really believe in that sort of stuff. Um, and I think just bringing all communities together, not just having these silos and, um, you know, just engaging separately with each community, if that makes any sense. Great. Yeah. Not seeing any more questions. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. That You're was so fast. <laughs> You're, <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to stay and listen to the rest of the uh, yeah. interviews if you'd like. Joyce, our process here is just tell us a little bit about yourself, your interest in the commission, or staying on the commission, I should say, um, and then we'll ask you a few questions on the back end. Okay. I'm Joyce Wattenberg. I have served with the task force uh, since the spring of 2016. My background is in human services, social work, and I have enjoyed volunteering over the years. So having something important such as the Human Service Task Force in my life has been very, very enjoyable. 
this past year has been really intriguing with the uh, uh, the Burke study, of course, underway, which of course succeeded our grant process. And we have a great opportunity to build camaraderie in our task force. Um, I'm active in the community with the Rotary Club. I'm a current chairman of our community service committee. I uh, volunteer with the Red Cross and have been for 60 years. As you remember, I started in third grade knitting Afghan squares <laughs> <laughs> and uh, currently serve um, again for about 30 plus years with the disaster services after hours for weekends and uh, after hour weekdays in uh, public um, information officer roles. I had the opportunity in September when my husband was called for Hurricane Harvey in Houston duty with the Red Cross. I served in the Red Cross office in Seattle to back up the community uh, relations staff when they left one of their people go to Hurricane Irma in Florida. So I had the opportunity at that time to be able to follow up with uh, the 200 or so volunteers from Washington State who were called for various disaster duty from Virgi the Virgin Islands to South Carolina to Georgia and across to Texas. Really very interesting conversations and to match them up with their media. Um, what kind of questions do you want to ask me? Council? Council Member Roth. Yeah, Ms. Turn on the mic. It's, so, on your in your Sammamish Task Force, what was the most surprising finding, or is there any aha moments in that period of time? Well, it was an opportunity for us as a uh, task force in our making the grant um, d uh, recommendations back in 2016 with the uh, the report reports and the uh, information that came with the uh, charity applications to see what um, those charities said that was serving in Sammamish, how many residents for what services. And also to see that you know, in some cases that uh, we have that east, I mean the north and the south, the Lake Washington School District type of charities that will come in from Redmond as well as the Issaquah School District divide where the charities from Issaquah will come in and the fact that we didn't really have a way at that time of being able to tell the, our community where to get help if they needed it. And that was true for mental health as well. And that was an aha moment to me. Thank you. Council Member Valderrama. Uh, thanks, uh, Joyce, for submitting your application and the service. What I'd be interested to find out is obviously you're a Rotarian, you served there, and the Rotarians do tremendous work in our community as do the Kwans and the, uh, what are the Knights of Columbus or another one that does here. I've been asking, but I don't get the sense that to date they've actually reached out in a formal way uh, in health and human services to those organizations because to date, those were the organizations who have the most traction in our society here in our community of working. What would be your recommendation on how they could engage more with those community service organizations going forward so that we complement each other more? You're saying that you would like to have the task force or the commission more involved with the, the whole of the community and to yep. pull in those volunteers and leadership from the various service committees? Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. For sure. Um, I think this is another opportunity to provide stand-up programs to these service groups to encourage them to come into specific opportunities, whether or not it is the Mayor's Day of Concern or it is something that we wish to do um, with getting some feedback and some direction on thoughts of what we will want to follow through the needs assessment, what the recommendations are there, and just to pull in more people to be involved. Because you're right, there's a lot of good leadership and volunteers in those organizations. Council Member Moran. I see that, I see that uh, you have put down two years. Are you tied to a two year um, um, time commitment? Nope, I'm, I've lived here for, um, now the mic's on better. I've lived here since 1986 and I'm not gonna be moving anytime soon. <laughs> 
And uh, I, I like volunteering. I also understand the importance of rotation and new blood. But I'm, I'm going to be here, willing to serve longer. Thank you so much, Joyce. You're welcome to stay and listen to the rest of the interviews if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much all. for your time. Good evening. So our process here is just uh, briefly tell us a little bit about yourself, your interest in the commission, and then we'll ask a few questions. Okay. Can you hear me okay? We can. All right. Um, my name is Roseanne Popa, and um, well, I've lived in the city for a lot of years and been excited about being part of Sammamish. Um, the reason that I was interested in this commission in particular is I've been strongly involved in the special needs community. Um, my son has a disability and he's had, he was diagnosed at the age of three and so we've been through the school systems. He's now a sophomore in high school and um, been heavily involved in organizing parents around issues around special needs. I organized a um, special needs support group for the district. Um, I've also worked as a mentor for the Arc of King County, where I get paired up with other parents that have recent diagnoses. So I feel pretty passionate about, especially as my son is getting older, the idea that as a city, we need to think about our citizens who have disabilities and how we can make sure that they're being included and I know the Y is doing some work towards that and some of our local businesses are also, but I think as a city it's really important to consider that aspect of things. Um, the other piece that really interests me is the elderly. Um, I've always had a passion for helping elderlies, elderly people, um, going back to my college days and currently I've been interviewing or working with friends of seniors and working with a client who's older, I help her with um, different errands to go on. And so I've really learned a lot about what it means to be a senior citizen in our city. So that's why I'm, I applied. Great, I'm gonna open it up to questions. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hornish. Yeah, uh, I find your background interesting being I don't know if you're from Ohio, but went to school in Ohio with a chemical engineer and, and designing airplanes, so. Okay, yeah, my background <laughs> has, I do Similar have background. engineering as a background. Does he have yeah. to recuse himself? <laughs> yeah, I'm not allowed to talk to engineers or lawyers. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, I noticed that you're doing a lot of volunteering right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, with everything that you're doing that you would have sufficient time to be able to, to devote to this role? As well? Yes, I would. Um, I, I how, how would you balance it, I guess? <laughs> um, well, I guess the research I did was that it would require one meeting a month, is that correct, or was that? That's pretty much close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, I have a good friend that's on the planning commission, so I talked to her, I know it's a different commission, but just what type of time commitment for her it's been. Um, and so in talking to her, I felt like it's um, definitely in my wheelhouse to support this commission. I, I don't see that as an issue at all. Okay. Thank you. Great. I don't see any more questions, so thank you. So, oh, do you have yeah, one? Just, yeah, so, um, you know, we've talked a lot about uh, the needs, but you're kind of the first one to specifically bring up sort of making sure that there are opportunities in the city for those with disabilities. So mm -hmm. what, what role do you think that a commission like this, or, or more importantly, probably what the city could play in helping to make sure there are opportunities for those with disabilities? Yeah, it's a good question. So, um, you know, my son is 16, and as he's approaching becoming an adult, I've been thinking a lot more about those type of issues because up till now, it's really been centered around the school. Um, and there are a couple issues that come up as, as students age out of our public school system. Employment is one issue, another issue is housing. And I know, you know, Issaquah has been 
doing a lot of good things around that, um, both from a nonprofit point of view as well as the city itself. Um, I, I heard that um, the new development that's going in in the Issaquah Highlands, that they're donating land for a group home up there. Um, so I think that the city, I, I don't know what our population is of citizens with disabilities, but I know in the school district, the number of students that receive special services is around 9%. Uh, the, the number that needs services as they age is, is less than that. But I do think it is a significant number of people that, um, that we should consider. I mean, as a city, to be inclusive um, and consider all of our citizens with dignity. Great. Thank okay. you so much. You're sure. welcome to stay and listen okay. to the rest of the Great. interviews Thank if you. you'd like. Thank you. Good evening. So our process here is just give us a uh, brief introduction to yourself, your interest in the commission, and then we'll just ask you a few questions. I, I should have brought my hearing aid turn on. <laughs> you, might, you might have to yell at me, kidding. <laughs> uh, my name is Mike Voss. I live at 23826 Southeast 47th Place, now in Sammamish. Used to be on Incorporated King County, and I wanna thank all the people and Sammamish for working with us on the transition and the annexation process that was successful a couple of years ago. I have spent, I'm retired now, but I spent 38 years in the human resource and recruiting industry, helping companies find great talent and helping the talent find great companies. That was our goal in my companies and that was successful. I went back one time and tried to count the number of people we found jobs for, but I, I got tired of counting. <laughs> and I, believe, I do believe that that experience of bringing a company and a person together would be a great experience for the Human Services Commission as well, bringing community ideas, community activities to the council, sharing and, and getting actively involved in uh, accelerating the Human Services Commission. I spent many years uh, in the annexation process, three times, two failures and one success, and uh, found that to be the best thing that occurred. Uh, we are all in the Klahani PAA, very pleased to be part of Sammamish. And looking back on it, it was karma. It was the right thing, it occurred and it happened. And outstanding and thank you. I'm currently president of the Brookshire Estates Homeowners Association. I've been involved in our HOA for about 10 years, was our vice president and now the president. So I'm actively involved in that part of the community, 138 homes that uh, we, we don't manage, we, we manage the HOA. So uh, once, uh, and, I, oh, and I, I spent two years on the Issaquah PPC, Planning Policy Commission, uh, back when we were part of unincorporated King County and they allowed us to participate in that. It was a great experience, uh, enjoyed it, but once we were annexed into Sammamish, I made the decision to resign from that position and uh, looked forward to getting the opportunity to find a, an area of interest within Sammamish that I could turn to. And the Human Services Commission is exactly that. My goal, I'm retired. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I am retired, so my goal is to give back to the community to the best of my ability uh, and to the best of uh, the uh, community's needs. Uh, I'm the type of person that reaches out well, communicates well, and works in organizations well, so I think it would be a good fit. I can't imagine a better opportunity for me to share my skills and experience than through this type of an op a commission in human services. Healthcare, senior care, child care, uh, you know, disabled people, the areas where there is a absolute need 
And I think the adding of this commission to your group of commissions is probably an incredible decision, an outstanding idea, because it is going to wrap a new kind of excitement within the community. Not that there hasn't been, your, your community is an exciting community, don't get me wrong. But I think it's gonna be an ex excellent opportunity for reaching out to the, what are we at now, 50, 60,000? 62. 62? Wow. We brought 11,000 plus, so okay, 62,000. <laughs> Outstanding, love it. So, um, you know, organizations like HopeLink, uh, Eastside Friends for the Seniors, these kind of groups that you folks have affiliated with and participated with are those that, you know, you can see a vision uh, in the eyes of the community. And I, I'm just excited to maybe have that opportunity and hopefully have that opportunity to be a part of that activity. Any questions? We'll open it up for questions, Council. Your orders. Um, I, I, I'm <coughs> thinking you're probably aware that we're doing a, a needs assessment as to the human services for the community. I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I'll speak up. Uh, <laughs> is that help? <laughs> Um, I, I hope you're aware that we are doing a needs assessment for the uh, community at large as far as the, the needs that we need to provide as, as a community. Exactly. Would you take a guess at what you think would be the, the highest need for our community or for our uh, citizens? We won't, we won't hold you to it, but. <laughs> Not seeing any more questions here, so thank you. You're welcome to stay and listen to the rest of the uh, interviews if you'd like. Thank, thank you. you. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, and I look forward to hearing back. Thank you. So I had one request for a break. Do we want to take a break, or do we want to forge forward? Have we have four left. Not assuming all four are here. Take a break. Break. Four left. <laughs> <laughs> this, has a, this has been a long day. For okay, so five minute break. Let's for reconvene at nine. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Real five minutes. Yeah. And this semantics. There is only one set of math in the world. <laughs>
Deputy Mayor. Okay, I think we're ready to get going again. So Stan, um, process here is just introduce yourself to us, your interest in the commission, and then we'll ask you a few questions. Thank you. Uh, my name's Stan Gano. I'm interested in position seven, which is the four-year position. I want to give back to the city of Sammamish. Currently, I serve on the King County Veterans uh, Program Advisory Board, and I'm the chair on that board, which I will give up if I'm selected for this position. Kathy Lambert has asked me to fill the position on the Veterans and Human Services Levy Board, and I told her, depending on the outcome of this, uh, I won't take that position. My whole life has been dedicated to service. I grew up in the scouting program, went into the Air Force. When I retired from the Air Force, moved to Sammamish about 22 years ago. I'm currently a contractor. I'm with the Disabled American Veterans. I'm their judge advocate for the state. And like I said, I um, serve on the King County Veterans Program Board. I helped write the Veterans and Human Services Levy back in 2005 with Bob Ferguson. Um, we saw that the service providers in King County, there were holes and we had to fix it. And that's the reason why the levy was originated to start with. So hopefully if I get chosen with the diversity of Sammamish, we need to make sure that we're reaching out to everyone. Um, the city appears to be a wealthy city, but there's a lot of people in the shadows that we don't address. And we need to look at that as well. So that's me. That's why I'd like to be here. Is there any questions? Great. Council, do we have questions? Deputy Mayor Hornish. Stan, any idea of how many veterans live in Sammamish since you've got that association? I do not. I have the number at home. Okay. Um, it's is it bigger than a bread box? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it actually is. Um, and King County, the veterans program itself deals with veterans who are about 80% poverty is the program. And so a lot of them do not live in Sammamish. And the ones that do, that kind of fall into that group are the seniors. Okay. So when they started an outreach program to try to um, get out into the county, establish the needs and fill the needs. We, we figured out that uh, we were approaching things the wrong way. We were putting people in houses, but not treating the whole person. So we knocked down some of the silos in King County. We actually treat the whole person now. So I take you off the street. I get you rehabilitation if you need it. I get you into a house. I get you that self-worth back again. Then you get a job. 
and you work yourself off the system and you help other people. So it's a mentoring program as well. So it's, it's a lot of interesting stuff that's taken place, but I, I wanna refocus and focus on the city. I was gonna say, cause that doesn't, it, it applies to others besides veterans in that same. It does, it does. As a matter of fact, we started a mobile medical van that travels around King County that goes to the people who live under the bridges and in the woods and at the food banks who need medical care. And we put counselors in place so that we can, there's a reason why people are homeless. And they never ask why. They never dealt with the why. And the why is what has to be dealt with. Councilmember Stewart. Yeah, um, so you list uh, your top three areas of uh, interest for human services in Sammamish. Um, I'm gonna steal a question from uh, our deputy mayor. Uh, first is, do you think those are in the priority order that you would see them? Um, and then uh, second question is, you talk a lot about the outreach, which I, I would agree is really important, but do you have any specific ideas on how we do that outreach? Well, hopefully the commission will be able to come up with some new ideas. Part of the problem we have in Sammamish is there's, we may have a program, um, but there's no way to get it out to the citizens. Not everybody watches Channel 21. If you have, I was talking to one of the other members, uh, if they have direct TV, you don't even get it. The newspaper's lacking. So we have to find a way to reach out to the people in need and some of that comes through the food bank and getting feedback from some of the service providers out there who are currently serving people in Sammamish. So we have to go to the Issaquah and to the Redmond and see who they're serving in Sammamish and try to get that. Also go to the schools. They know what children need help. And that's one of the areas that we need to look at, the underserved population, the seniors, the young people, the special needs people. You know, I have a grandson that has autism. So, I mean, those are some of the areas that we do need to look at. But as far as the priorities, until we get the needs assessment and truly evaluate what's going on, it's kind of hard to say this is number one, this is number two. Councilmember Russ. Thank you, Stan. Yes, sir. What do you what do you think the city's role is in addressing the community's human service needs? Um, I would almost see the city growing and dealing with housing issues for the uh, affordable housing side of things, housing people. Believe it or not, we got homeless people in Sammamish. We need to look at the service providers that we do provide money to and say, okay, how do they overlap? Where do they cross boundaries? How many people are they really serving in Sammamish? And to really take a solid look at it and reach out to other areas. You know, do we need to bring a food bank in? You know, we have, how do we deal with the diversity that we have in Sammamish now. We have different cultures and we need to bring those together. And that's part of the city's job is to find a way to bring together all the ethnic groups and the different cultures and religions and reach out to all these people. And how do we do that? We'll have to figure it out. I mean, it's a learning curve. This is a new thing for us. And I I'm excited to get involved in the ground floor. Thank you, Stan. Thank You're you. Welcome to stay, or I think you said I you have to, have to run off to, go to, Seattle to West Seattle. And Seattle. And fix a sump pump. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Good evening, 
So our process here is just to give us a short introduction to yourself and a little bit of your why you're interested in the commission, and then we'll ask a few questions at the end. Uh, forgive me, I missed the first part of what you said. Oh, j just the process that we're doing here tonight for the interview. Basically, I, we're just looking for some information about yourself. Sure. And then your interest in the commission. Oh, sure. Oh, golly. Um, I'm interested in the commission because I really would like to give back to the community all that I've gotten from Sammamish. That may sound a little trite, but it's really true. I've done a lot of volunteering in Sammamish at the Senior Center, working for the Food Bank, and also through Eastside Friends of Seniors. And I really enjoyed the opportunity to meet a lot of people and find ways to help them. So my real main mission in life is to contribute something. I'd like to make a contribution of some sort. And that's why I thought the commission would be interesting. Why this specific commission? Well, it's all about some of the big issues that you face, the city faces. For instance, two big issues that come to my attention are homelessness and, um, and domestic violence. Both are really key, I think, issues. I don't know really what the city is doing to address those. From talking with a, f a few other folks who were waiting with me, I understand there's been a, a committee of some sort that's, that's been talking about some, some of these issues, but I don't know how far they've come. I can only tell you what is of immediate concern to me, and that's the homeless problem and, and domestic violence. I'd really like to do something to help the people that are affected in, in all those areas. Uh, what do I bring to the commission? Well, my chief strength is communication, my communication skills. I am a very good writer. I, write, I wrote for the computer industry for almost 25 years and I can write very clearly and succinctly. So if the commission were to recommend that we present, that they present a proposal to you for your consideration, I would be most happy and most comfortable preparing that proposal for you to review. And I think I could do it in a way that you would find it easy to understand and organized in a way that you would find useful. What else can I bring in the way of communication? Well, I'm a good public speaker. I've had some experience doing that, although I don't see a direct result correlation between that and, and what I'd be doing in the commission. But I'm also a personal coach, a certified coach. So I've come to understand a kind of perspective when I'm listening to people and when I'm asking questions that is very, very productive. For instance, if, if the committee is, is deadlocked, the commission is deadlocked, I might be able to intervene by saying, excuse me, I think it sounds like we're a little stuck here. I wonder what we can do to get unstuck. Does anybody have any ideas? By asking these kinds of open-ended questions, I can invite them to think about answers they might give. Instead of yes or no answers, which would usually come from, well, is this the right thing to do? Or should we do this tomorrow? No, the kind of questions I think I could contribute to the commission's work are the kinds of open-ended, thought-provoking questions that are really gonna add value to the work of the commission. In addition, I'm a facilitator as a coach and a mediator, a trained mediator. So if we run into problems, I think I could intervene if I'm requested to help resolve differences between members who have a conflict. In addition, I offer a kind of special skill that you may not have heard of, but it may come in crucial to dealing with proposals that come before the commission. For example, the technique I'm describing is called dynamic governance. It's a way by which commission members can evaluate a proposal to see whether it really makes sense. If you'd like more detail about it, I'd be happy to provide it later, or I can give you a quick summary of it right now. What's your preference? Quick summary, I think is what she said. Yeah. I'm sorry. Quick hear. summary. Oh, all right. So the person who has a proposal presents it, and then each of the commission members has a chance to 
start one round in which they ask questions if they have any. That's called a quick reaction round. That's followed by what's called a gut reaction round in which each member has a chance to sort of say what's inside them, how they feel about it when they hear it. The next step is a step in which they vote. And this is where it really is interesting because each member is asked whether they should, whether they could accept it or not in terms of whether it's within their range of tolerance. And if you think about that for a minute, that's a whole lot different from just saying, will you accept it, yes or no? No, this means, this is asking, is it within your range of tolerance? Is it between here and here? Not, yeah, not here, but here and here. Only if somebody is convinced that it's not within their range of tolerance could they voice a paramount objection and say, wait a minute, no, this just isn't going to work for me at all. In which case, the proposal goes back to the person proposing it, and he has a chance, he or she has a chance to modify it. And then it goes through the same process again until there are no more paramount objections. It's really an amazing process because it gives everybody a chance to be heard. And everybody has a value in the process. So that's something I'm really excited about. And if the commission were to, if we were to stuck trying to make a decision and the commission were to say, hey, is there a better way? I would say yes. <laughs> so that's it sort of in a nutshell. Forgive me if I rambled a bit. No, but I really I, get excited when I talk about that. I think we have a couple questions up here for you. Uh, Council Member Stewart? Oh, sorry, that was my bad. I left the light on. Council Member Ross? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now suddenly we have no questions. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have no questions. Unless, no? Okay, very good. Thank, Thank you, very you so very much. Thank you very much. Evening. So our process here is just give us a quick introduction to yourself and your interest in the commission, and we'll ask you a few questions sure. on the back end. Hi, Larry Wright, uh, resident of Sammamish, obviously. I've served on the Human Services Task Force for the last year, 18 months, two years. Um, professionally, I work in human services, and I want to give back to the community by serving on the commission. Okay. Um, your interest in the commission? I mean, I know you've been serving so on the So part of it is I'd like to see the, the work continue. So the work of the task force to have some continuity, and I'd like to be part of that. Uh, but also, uh, I'd like to give back to the community in some way. A lot of my work has traditionally been at a state and national level. And so I'm trying to do things more at the community level as well. And I'd like to be part of this. I think this is important work as the community develops. Uh, my family's lived up here for 30 odd years, and I think this is really a uh, interpretively flexible moment in the history of Sammamish, and so to be part of it, I think it's really important, and I think I have some skills that would be brought to bear and uh, make a difference. Great. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hornish, do yes. you have a question? Um, so with your past about two years on yeah. the task force, what's the biggest thing that you've learned in, in that time with the group that you've served with? Uh, you know, there's two things. I think the group itself uh, was pretty interesting. It was a great dynamic. It was um, people who I, I hadn't really known before, um, but learned a great deal uh, about the community, about different elements of the community that I hadn't seen. So having been here for, you know, 30 odd years, in my mind, I know some Amish, but uh, even with a group of just some seven people, all of a sudden I realized I don't know Sammamish, or there are a lot of different Sammamishes. Um, and so that was a really positive experience. But I think what also came out of it was some of the work and seeing what people are asking for, and, and particularly when uh, Burke started to come in and do some of the research around 
what are really the needs that are here? And, and a better understanding some of those challenges. Um, in my work, which is with the Lake Washington Schools Foundation, I work with youth uh, quite frequently, but I even learned more and more about some of the challenges youth are facing in our communities and the anxiety associated with um, you know, being in a, in a high performing, uh, high expectation driven area. And so a lot of things popped out to me. Uh, my parents still live here, they're in their 70s. And uh, that was also an interesting element. Um, starting to think about people who have lived here for a long time, what's their next step? Are there starting to think about housing, starting to think about transportation to uh, medical services and all those types of things, which of course I had dealt with here and there kind of episodically, but as part of the uh, task force, I started to see these things slot into a, a broader kind of a map of, you know, I think actually we need to start thinking about some of these and prioritizing some of them. And so I've, I've been excited by that. Great, I don't see any more questions, sorry. Thank you. No, that's good, boy. Okay. That was easy. I, I see my two minutes to the next person. Thank you, thank you guys, appreciate it. You're welcome to stay in your well feedback. Done. Well done. Good evening. So Good our evening. process here has been just give us a quick introduction to yourself, your interest in maintaining your status on the commission, and then um, we'll ask a few questions. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you for having me here this evening. I'm sure you are pleased to know I may well be the last interviewee for you this evening. Um, so I'm Tom Ehlers. I've lived in Sammamish for um, over 20 years and have been involved in a broad variety of volunteer activities involved with uh, our church. I'm also currently the chair of the Issaquah Food and Clothing Bank. And my mindset has always been helping out in the community and finding ways to, to give back. Um, I've been very pleased with the work of the task force. I feel like we've made some nice progress identifying those areas that we need to focus on moving forward. And that's still in a formative uh, way, actually. I think we've got some good insights but we need to continue that work. And as the task force started winding down, I reflected on you know, the work we're doing and the team that we had together and, and just where Sammamish is as a, as, a, as a city. And I realized I wanted to kind of put my, my hat in the ring to continue the work moving forward. Great. Council, questions? So uh, what was the biggest thing you learned in the past year and a half, two years serving on the task force, Tom? I would say um, that I believe a caring community needs to figure out how to help its um, citizens most at need. And I think that we don't have the deep insight we need to know where to put our efforts. So as a result, we've put a lot of efforts and we've made little investments in a broad range of of um, very, very worthwhile causes, but I don't know if we're making as much of a big impact as we can. So the work of the task force has been to identify those five, what we call big buckets. One of them, as an example, is wellness, particularly teen wellness. I think we need to go deeper into that to make sure our, our community has access to the needs. So what I've learned is we have great needs in our community, we're growing up, um, and yet what we've done so far has been a bit of a scattershot and I think we have to take a more planful approach to that, which is the work the task force has been taking on. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Ritchie. Um, Mr. Ehlers, thank you for your service. Uh, Issaquah Food Bank, Food and Clothing Bank, amazing Welcome. resource. I would hope someday we can all take a field trip down there to see what you guys do. I've had some time volunteering down there and it's, it's an outstanding resource for the whole community. Specifically to Sammamish, what is your read as far as the needs here? Is it uh, an ongoing? Is it growing? What do you see? I know you have your, you've seen it all. So mm -hmm. what's your impact? What do you see as a Sammamish specific need? Well, I'll, I'll start with an anecdote that I believe to be true. I believe to be true in our community tonight, there is um, a young person that's going to be going to sleep tonight without enough food. That's true. I think there's a person that is um, under duress and doesn't know where to turn for help. I believe that's true in our community. 
So I believe the needs in our community are very great and we're just starting to unfold and figure that out. I think we have the basic core building blocks in, in place, but I think there's more pain in our community and I think there's more we can do. Um, the good news is we're a caring community and that's great, but that only takes us so far. We have to put action, and we have to execute against it. And I think there's more pain underneath that we need to better understand that. And you start to learn that by listening, simply listening and then taking action. So that's my view. Thank you. I don't see any more questions, so thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care. Have a good evening. Is that, that's it, Moni? Great. Okay. okay. So, uh, count, council, so the next, the next steps in this process would be that uh, w take your time, uh, reflect on your notes, uh, the next council meeting on the 16th, the plan is to have an executive session at which time uh, we will discuss the uh, qualifications of the candidates. Uh, and then uh, after that, we will ask you to actually go through a voting process uh, for uh, filling all the, the commissions. And all the applicants know the process and will be yeah, they'll watching they'll on the be kept, or whatever. They'll be kept, <laughs> they'll be right. kept apprised, right. yes. Okay, and we have a nice segue here on our screens, which is our legislative priorities for 2018. We did have a, just as a preface, we did have a small discussion during the agenda meeting um, that we may want to minimize our list. It's very, very long. Um, and so if we think in terms of elevator speech to legislators, uh, we couldn't possibly get this all out. Um, so might want to keep that in mind as we go through what's on. Um, I can't click to it. Okay, Mike, are we ready to go? Okay, so the legislative priorities uh, came from a meeting that uh, we had last year. Uh, members of the city's legislative committee uh, consisted of uh, Bob Keller, Don Gerrand, and our own Romero Valderrama. So uh, we intended to get this to council last year, but quite honestly, we, given everything that was on uh, the agendas, we just did not have the time to, uh, to get to it. So historically, what this has been is uh, uh, ideas of what we can communicate to our state legislators, as well as in a couple cases, uh, our priorities for federal legislation. So each year, uh, the city council that does adopt the legislative priorities, we're just a little behind on that. Timing's actually perfect uh, for our consideration of this now. Uh, one, we have uh, four new council members uh, that uh, will be involved. Uh, we also will use these to communicate to our legislators uh, through the AWC uh, Legislative Day, uh, typically members of our legislative committee, which we hope, uh, if we do decide to have a legislative committee uh, this next year, uh, would go to have the potential of going down to visit with our, with our local representatives uh, at the state in Olympia. Uh, I believe that'll take place, uh, is scheduled for the end of uh, January. Uh, so ag again, this is used primarily to influence change at the state level and let our legislators know what your priorities are for the city of Sammamish, as well as <coughs> typically supporting uh, our other brethren at other cities. So let me run through these. Uh, one of the things that we did talk about as the mayor mentioned is we may, we may want to pick a handful, uh, maybe three, and I'll go through as we, as we talk about these different things. Uh, we did have uh, some questions uh, from uh, Council Member Stewart uh, that were helpful. Uh, several people that, this, these have been seen before. Uh, these have been several of them year after year. I don't know how effective we were at communicating them so that they have remained on our list. Uh, some of them we may want to just drop. Uh, so we'll go through and, and uh, try to fill you in a bit. So liquor tax 
uh, restoration, uh, AWC has found that uh, over time our uh, share of the state liquor tax has eroded as, this, as the state has needed more and more revenue uh, to keep uh, their business going. Uh, so some of it has come back, but uh, we want to make sure that uh, this would remain temporary and not, not permanent uh, or is not further reduced. So historically, uh, we are, are budgeting currently about $290,000 uh, and uh, we just wanna make sure this doesn't disappear. Uh, we have uh, quite a bit of activity uh, that goes on to support uh, education uh, and police services related to uh, problems with liquor, uh, alcohol abuse, et cetera. So this is something that uh, has been on the list. This, in my opinion, may be something that you might want to, uh, if you want to reduce the list, you may want to forego this uh, for this year. Uh, item number two. Do you want uh, to talk about them in? Oh, do we want uh, to do we want to have a conversation on each one? Deputy Mayor, that'd Ornish. be great. Might be easier. Uh, I, and I concur that this <coughs> might be one that falls a little bit farther down on priorities because I just you have to ask, what's the likelihood of this actually happening given the constraints of the legislatures, uh, the state legislators? I just don't think that they ha their hands are so tied and constrained. They have to look at everything, so I think the chances of us actually getting anywhere on this are poor. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. And, and the other, the other part of it is, I believe that AWC will probably try to okay. help, was, help our interests in protecting this. That was going to be my area. point. Is AWC is already working that angle? To, uh, Council Member Valdrama. Yeah, this one I, I would actually support. Most efforts of AWC, I think we can let them fight. This one in particular hits all of our cities because all of the effects of the alcohol are felt by our city and the education efforts, the rehabilitation all fall upon us. When the Association of Washington Cities was originally created, it was created specifically for the purpose because the cities wanted to get that alcohol money and to make sure it was being applied. This is a recent takeaway that's taken place and it behooves all of our cities to continue to reiterate that point because we're under assault, not only under the liquor money, the public works trust funds you're gonna find, the marijuana money that's going on and the unfunded mandates that are also mentioned here. And while we are not able to one off make the legislators change, collectively we are as it is the, and right now, especially in this year where we're having the tax fatigue coming across a lot of our people, I think it behooves us to remind the legislators of who bears the brunt of this issue when they're taking these funds to pay for their own. I mean, last year you saw the 1% they wouldn't give the cities, but they gave it to themselves as one of the issues where there is now a disconnect between our state legislators and the people that they're representing, which are represented most directly by us. So, I would keep this on, does we wanna make it the first item? I don't know, but I think we need on this, on marijuana, on public works trust, to make them understand the effects of it. And likewise, when we talk to our federal reps, with the taking away of block grants <coughs> and others and the effects that those have on the cities as well. My two cents. Maybe we can go through them and then circle back. Okay. If, if needed. Sounds great. Uh, any more comment on that item? I don't okay. have any more. Uh, next item is marijuana tax uh, expansion. Uh, as you know, uh, we do not have any marijuana retail establishments in Sammamish. Uh, the legislature in their infinite wisdom uh, decided that uh, for those cities that uh, do not uh, have marijuana businesses, that they would not receive any of the uh, tax money uh, coming from that. Uh, we do, however, have, there is there are implications uh, uh, that we deal with on a regular basis, police services, drug abuse services, et cetera, uh, related to that, that uh, are not coming from uh, the marijuana tax uh, as far as the city is concerned. So this is an area that would be helpful to have additional resources coming from this particular item. Uh, but uh, that, that is a problem. Uh, the money here, however, is not great based on what other, other 
cities are receiving. Uh, for example, uh, Issaquah received $37,000, Kirkland $43,000, and Bellevue $79,000. But again, it is uh, one of those things that would be helpful to us to uh, receive our uh, share, as it were. Council Member Stewart. Uh, I just, I would agree that I think all of the items on this list are worthy, but I think we do need to pare it down to three to five. That's kind of my general rule, right, of anything. Um, and I think that uh, most of these are really about funding, so I'd like to see us as we go through, um, you know, put them in that kind of a priority order. So while this may be a uh, reasonable request, I think that it's not material at this point in terms of money. And, and maybe we can go through some of them quickly based on that. Member Ross? Yeah, for, for clarity, um, if to get the funding, we would have to permit marijuana businesses in Sammamish? Well, actually what we would ask the legislature uh, would be to change the rules so that we would not have to have legislative or would not have to have a retail business. We would like them to change the rules in order okay. to receive uh, uh, mitigation money basically for uh, people that use marijuana. Got it, thank you. Yeah. Which doesn't cost them anything. Well, our, it's a reallocation. It's a it would be a reallocation, <laughs> yes. yeah, of of the share. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this this is uh, an item that is not again, it's more philosophical uh, than it is uh, from a financial standpoint. The SEPA uh, work that is done related to a project, the city has to bear the cost of that. Uh, it's not a lot of money at this particular juncture, but it could uh, develop into a bit more. So in, to some extent, it's almost like uh, a, another item called uh, unfunded mandate, where the rules are set and stacked against the city so that we can't actually collect the money from, in this particular case, by developers that are proposing a development. Uh, SEPA work, uh, would be at the cost of the city for our evaluation of the particular project. So that's that's what this is. Uh, this particular year we have budgeted $12,000. So it's not, again, a high cost item. Uh, it's something we can be aware of, but uh, as far as a high priority, it may not be where you want to place your efforts. Yeah. Councilmember Ross, did you have a question or is that left over? Okay. All right. Okay, next item, uh, Public Works Assistance Trust Fund. Uh, as Councilmember Valderrama uh, mentioned, uh, the Public Works Trust Fund uh, has been, uh, shall we say, assaulted uh, year after year. Uh, it has been money that uh, has been uh, used by a variety of people or a variety of entities, uh, water districts, uh, cities, uh, et cetera, it's primarily done to build infrastructure. Uh, the, the cost of the money is very inexpensive. It's, we're, we have a public works trust fund that we used, a uh, $10,000 loan to do the initial phase of 228. Uh, it was a 20 year loan at half a percent. $10 million. Uh, $10 million at half a percent. So it's almost like free money and uh, uh, we are paying it back uh, and per our requirement, and uh, uh, the money slowly uh, has been, uh, shall we say, uh, peeled off as p repayments have been made by people that borrowed the money. <coughs> so that money coming back to the state has been used uh, to fund state general operations. So it's, it's one of those things that statewide uh, is important to a lot of different entities. Uh, the cost of uh, borrowing is relatively inexpensive. Uh, they do have a smaller program now with the Public Works Trust Fund loan, but the market rate is uh, much higher to, or, or much closer to what the uh, general market would be at this particular point. So I have a quick question. Um, while I completely support this, I'm wondering if this is another one that um, AWC or um, SCA has supported and maybe. In, in, all, like, in all likelihood, uh, AWC uh, is very much involved in this particular item and it may not be a specific to Sammamish uh, priority. Right, okay, good. So I, I have a- Council Member Valderrama, sorry. 
Yeah, you know, I think it's important to support this. We've been a direct beneficiary, we still are, and given the needs of our transportation that are starting to become much more dire, we're gonna want to continue to, to hit that trough again. Uh, right now we have a situation where this has become a rating pot for the state legislator, and on top of that, they start coming up with new ideas, which would be nice. There's talk about creating the state bank, which will help the cities well, in effect, what they're talking about is empty this out, start a whole new thing, promise us they won't raid that one, which they've already raided this. And so they're basically trying to say, don't pay any attention to behind the curtain. So the more we make and present the attention to this issue, which we have been in, in our particular case, it is a big issue and it's gonna be a bigger issue going forward. It reminds the state that they have to live up to their commitments and not try to think that, well, we'll just raid this and start the game all over again and continue to raid them going forward. Thank you. One of the benefits of the Public Works Trust Fund or the program is that it has one, I'd have to say, one of the more successful programs that the state has Absolutely. ever put together. There's uh, never been a default on it. Yep, exactly, exactly, okay. Uh, Marketplace Fairness Act, uh, essentially this is a continuation of the uh, sales tax program where it is, uh, sales tax would be collected at the point of delivery. Uh, this is primarily a federal uh, situation where uh, within the state of Washington we have adopted this, but this is a federal, would be a federal priority uh, to work with our, our federal uh, legislators. Uh, the state is, uh, Department of Revenue is very much aware of this and uh, is taking efforts to work with Amazon uh, from a state standpoint, uh, but this is a, a federal issue. Uh, primarily this would allow, this, the, way is, the reason it's called marketplace fairness is the fact that we have a lot of people that will sh shop locally uh, and use our stores as uh, showrooms, and then they'll go and buy the product uh, remotely uh, and not pay sales tax on it. Technically, people that do that owe use tax uh, and are responsible for remitting that, but very infrequently do they actually do that. So, any thoughts or comments Council on Member this? Council Member Valderrama. Uh, there was discussion last year in our state legislator of our state unilaterally taking this action. There was one earlier state that had done it. I don't know if it was Colorado or, or which at them, uh, but that had decided not to wait for the federal government and unilaterally do it. And there was some discussion in our state legislature that they do the same thing, that unilaterally we declare that we're gonna start taxing and requiring all the sellers in, uh, in and out to start doing that. So I think that this was being looked at the two prong, one at the federal, but also to encourage our state legislators to continue actively exploring and learning from that, that one state that had moved unilaterally on it. Okay, this, this is uh, a unique situation uh, that Sammamish uh, discovered several years ago when we annexed the Eldera Montane area. Uh, there is a Metropolitan Parks District that is a Snoqualmie Valley Park District. The people that uh, belong to that park district uh, are paying money to them, they're paying taxes to them uh, for the operations. In return, uh, the uh, uh, park district is supposed to provide uh, park services, park and recreation services. Uh, when the city annexed that area, uh, the city then became responsible for, for providing park services and part of the taxes that these individuals pay is to, uh, is to pay for that. Well, the tax to the uh, Metropolitan Park District did not go away. So they are being taxed twice, essentially for similar services. Uh, what we would propose uh, would be that this be treated in a similar fashion to a fire district uh, being an area being annexed to the city. Uh, basically, the city would then become responsible for providing park services and the taxes for them would uh, cease to be collected by uh, the park district. Bonding would be, or debt uh, related to that would continue on 
until that debt would be paid off, just like uh, a fire district. This is somewhat unique to us. A lot of legislators uh, don't realize this is happening. There's no, no mechanism in state law uh, to allow this to happen. Uh, I have talked to several legislators last year, uh, and they said, well, uh, tell us again next year. And uh, they, they thought that they might be helpful uh, with this. It, it makes sense to them, so it hopefully could be a priority for us uh, to try to help prevent double taxation. Any, any comments on that? Nope. nope. Okay. Okay, unfunded mandates. This is, uh, I would have to say, a f more of a philosophical question. Uh, we are constantly being uh, asked to comply uh, with both federal and state regulations uh, without a funding source. And so uh, it's been problematic over, over many, many years. Uh, a good example of it that is listed here is the National Pollution uh, Discharge Elimination System. Uh, was put upon us by the federal government with no funding. So essentially what we've had to do is we've had to raise uh, surface water fees in order to uh, fund this particular program. Right. Any comments on this? I have a quick comment. It's just, it's not terribly specific. I mean, I know we've got an example here, but I think if yeah, we're looking it, for it legislators is, to take not, action, they need to not, be more specific. It's more of a philosophical, it's yeah. not specific to a particular program. You're right. Uh, Councilmember Ritchie? Just a quick question about that. Um, what's the purpose of the document? Is this a, like you said, a going to Senator Hobbs' office and saying we need money for 228th gas, let's get on the supplemental transportation bill, or is this a let's post something on the web and feel good about it? Uh, historically, it's been something that we have taken to our legislators and said, have said these are our priorities. We would like your support. Uh, if you have legislation that you're considering, will you please look at these items to see, make sure that we're not harmed? Uh, and then also in some p particular cases, this, in this one in particular, uh, you know, okay, we're asking for if you do have legislation and you're putting more of a burden on us as far as responsibility, please don't give us an unfunded mandate. If you're gonna have us do it, at least give us some money to help us do it. I, I don't disagree. I, I'm, I'm but clear. You're, abs you're absolutely right. Uh, this hopefully is a, is a document that will be simple enough that we can go to our legislators. Postcard size, these are, these are some Amish's priorities, uh, and we'd like your assistance. So How, it yeah. usually goes with an ask. Exactly, well, yeah. And like you know, you know, Council Member you know, Struer was saying, this is a your three to five, you know, bullet point one yep. pager, but also as Mayor uh, Malchow was saying, something we can actually almost like an elevator speech, yep. something we can yep. literally go in there and say, unfunded mandates affect the city of Sammamish this way in this regard in this specific state legislative you know, action, versus trying to put together one document that focuses on federal congressional actions versus what's coming out of Olympia. I mean, they're two separate issues. Yes, they both affect the city, but I would hope that we can. Out. In as much as possible, I'm not sure the folks in Olympia want to, they're getting their own unfunded mandates from Washington. <laughs> Fair, so, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You're absolutely right. Okay. Uh, transportation funding. Uh, this is an item that's a carry carryover uh, from uh, years past. Actually, this is, uh, I think, the second year that we've had this in here. Uh, we do have some transportation corridors that impact us dramatically, uh, and those being State Route 202, I-90, 520, and 405. Uh, those are basically the main corridors uh, that our citizens travel on. So to the extent that we can uh, uh, support continued regional improvements to those, uh, the better we are. Uh, we, do ha we did get, uh, I believe, $200,000 in funding for State Route 202 study that we're working with the state on. And part of that came from uh, this particular uh, legislative priority being delivered to some of our representatives. Councilmember Stewart? Yeah, um, this is where again, uh, and this was kind of my general feedback with my questions is, 
all of this is great, but I do, I, I think we need to be very specific and have a very targeted ask. Because I think if you go to very busy people and say, I want some stuff, um, you're probably not going to get it. But if we can go in with a very specific list, and I, not to jump ahead, but I feel like we have this and we have another uh, transportation item, uh, I feel like we need to come up with a couple of very key asks and go pound on those and, and you know, instead of taking a shotgun approach, let's go hit some targets. Okay. Council Member Valderrama. Yeah, no, I support what Pam had said. I think we need to make this one much more specific uh, than the regionals and quite frankly, we, there are a lot of other cities that are gonna be arguing for 405 and I-5 and I-90 on that, but what are the ones that are more specific to us that we can, we can then argue and have a better chance of getting and seeing some benefit from it directly, especially given the situation that we're now going through here on transportation needs? Well, and, and it may be, do we, in this particular case, do we want to limit this to State Route 202, for example, improvements to State Route 202? Uh, a couple of the other ones uh, we had put in last year uh, essentially to support uh, some of our neighbors. Uh, and that's why those were mentioned in there as well. Councilmember Ross. Yeah, I agree we need to shorten the list. And I'd like to see us prioritize by likelihood of success and financial impact. Councilmember Ritchie. Uh, thank you. There are, right now, there are two things based upon the conversations that I have that we can get involved in right now, and if not now, put a placeholder in for the next you know, budget that's gonna come out. We have the supplemental transportation budget that's gonna be in front of Senator Hobbs and State Rep Cliburn right now. And a specific transportation ask, a study, something that we can get our Smamish toehold in, whether it's a connection, how we connect to 202. We're a landlocked little city here, so we really need to get ourselves that voice frankly just hasn't been out there enough so in as much as we can be specific as councilmember stewart said that to me is that's going to get a lot oh yeah that road that connection that microsoft those people yeah got it that type of immediate connection and the, the fish culverts which we'll discuss in a second the political realities are you know the 45th ld we we really can take advantage of environmental concerns and our transportation concerns in this capital budget and in this supplemental transportation budget in this session, and frankly, the clock is ticking. They're underway as of yesterday. So uh, specificity, I agree 100%. Yeah. Okay, uh, condominium liability reform. Uh, as you all know, uh, there aren't a lot of condominiums being constructed in Washington State currently uh, because of the, uh, the tort uh, rules related to uh, builders being sued uh, comes very costly uh, and given what we're seeing in town center uh, what's being built there instead of condominiums are apartments uh, we've heard from our citizens that there's a great desire to actually own uh, the houses or the condominiums that they uh, would be living in uh, the some of the apartments are being built to condominium standards uh, after the 10-year uh, statute of limitations on, on this uh, expires, uh, then in many cases they would have the potential to be converted. So this is something that uh, the past uh, legislative committee uh, brought up and thought that this would be something good that could help us in Sammamish uh, directly as it relates to development of town center. Councilmember Ross, did you have something? No. Okay. Okay. Any comments? Okay. Uh, fish passage culvert improvements. Uh, we have found that uh, we have s quite a few different culverts along East Lake Sammamish Parkway uh, that uh, would it would be very helpful to the Kokanee uh, to be replaced and improved. Uh, we have received some money for the Zachary's Creek culvert replacement, uh, but we've got uh, quite a few more. So uh, this was an idea that we would ask uh, for a grant program related to this. Uh, it's on the state's uh, list of items because they have had a court ruling that the state where they're responsible for the 
uh, uh, culvert replacement, uh, the courts have ordered them to put some funding there and we thought this would be a good time while, while it's fresh in their minds to uh, ask them to set up some type of grant program. Uh, just to make sure that is part of the cap, just recognizing the, the way the Olympia works, that is a capital budget issue. So that will be part of the negotiations. We're not asking for something that's six years down the road. This is right now could priority right now. for them. It's something we could get in the budget mm -hmm. right now. Okay. Okay, uh, this is support increased access to a variety of transportation options. This is, this is something that uh, the legislative committee talked about. Uh, it is very vague uh, because we actually don't know specifically uh, what it is that, what options might become available to us. So for example, one of the things that fell under this particular item is that uh, Metro has almost a monopoly on carriage, uh, being able to transport people from one area to another. They have the connector system. Amazon has their bus system, but they can't share the bus system. Uh, so uh, there, there is a movement uh, among some cities to allow a sharing of resources. It doesn't make sense to run an Amazon bus down 228th and then a Microsoft bus down 228, uh, and uh, why not allow uh, employers, if it, they're gonna do that, uh, to share resources and make it more effective, more efficient, uh, et cetera. So that, that is part of that. Uh, the other is support for increased uh, metro service, essentially. So this is a very broad general uh, objective. So uh, I think the specificity here, about. we may want to reword it to public-private partnerships with Metro so that it's far more specific because that's really what we're looking for. Okay. Not, not just public-private partnerships, but allow uh, shared uh, carriage perhaps. Yes. Uh, for, private, for private companies. Okay. <coughs> Sounds good. And, Hold uh, on, wait, oh, we've got sorry. some questions here. Uh, Council Member Moran. If we're looking for things to pare down on the list, um, this <laughs> seems like something that might be more of a King County issue than a state issue at this point. So I would suggest that we concentrate this on a, on a uh, county issue right now. Is There is but overlap with the legislature there, though, isn't there? Actually, it's, a, it's, the, it's Metro's interpretation of the state's uh, RCW that it gives them that monopoly. Uh, so the discussion has been getting the state to change the RCW to make, to clarify that people could in fact do it. So there is, there is that King County part of it. Uh, King County would like to, based on what I've heard, like to maintain that monopoly. I thought they would. <laughs> Council Member Stewart. Um, again, uh, if there's money to be had from the state to help fund, you know, some sort of public transportation, while we may not have the, the transportation master plan complete, uh, I think we have enough information that we know a couple of really important things. I mean, off the top of my head, I could think of, how about a direct route to Seattle again, right? I mean, that, so mm -hmm. they may not completely align with what we end up with in the transportation master plan, but that is close to a year away, so I say we take a shot at some things that we know would be hugely beneficial uh, and, and go ask for those. So okay. if we could make it not be a general, hey, we want okay. more, more better transportation, let's have some real specific okay. asks there and okay. go for it. Great. Okay. And then lastly, typically what we have done in the past is shown our support for Association of Washington Cities uh, and Sound Cities Association legislative priorities by just essentially listing those. Uh, we don't actually have to pitch those to legislators uh, when we, we meet with them, uh, but uh, it's, it's a good statement to make. 
So m my suggestion after having this conversation with you tonight uh, might be to ask that uh, we have a an ad hoc committee to meet uh, over the next, maybe next couple of days. The Id idea was to bring a proposal back to you on the 16th, uh, which would be next Tuesday. I know it's fast, uh, but the legislature is in session currently, uh, so it may behoove us to move as quickly as we can, maybe pair it down to three or four, try to gain that specificity uh, that uh, was discussed and uh, go forward from there. Uh, I don't know if, if council would be agreeable to that, but that may be the most expeditious way to move forward. Yes, I think that would be a good idea. Um, I don't know how we select who it is. Um, Councilmember Valderrama seems like an obvious person as the- Sorry? I was saying you seem like an obvious person to participate in this very quick ad hoc committee considering your work on this list last year. Yeah, although I think that Jason would also be a, an obvious uh, candidate okay. for that. And uh, I actually think that given the, the way the House and the Senate are right now, he, he may be a more okay. obvious choice. Uh, Councilmember Richie, are you? Romero and I have talked about this a little bit in passing before, you know, before okay. we took office. And I, I'm happy to help participate and pare it down to prepare something just to kind of, you know, three or four things, maybe five things and bring it down to three. But again, like, um, you know, Lyman was saying, just something with some specificity to it that we can actually say, this is the code, this is why, this is how, and to take advantage of uh, the, the short session and see what we can do. But I think that I'm happy to help. And okay. I'm, you know, so Romero and I can we'll work maybe that we'll out. try and coordinate, I don't know, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, are you willing? I'd be willing if it's in the next couple of days. You know? Okay, yeah, I think it needs to be this week. That we okay. can take advantage of it. So, and so maybe we can coordinate something if okay. everyone's amenable so, to that. So Tom, Jason, and Romero, or no, Pam, I think did you want to be involved? I I would love to be involved. Or you would actually, like to be yeah. Involved. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's we okay. We can only have three. Right? We can only have three. I'll step back. No, no, I, no I think you. no. Lisa didn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think Romero had kind of said he wasn't. Said, said oh, Trina, yeah. Jason, okay. Tom, I don't know if I don't you know. Know. you're talking about or just wanted to help Actually, out. I am on these because okay, that but we're all on the same page, I think, as yeah, far as Yeah, as far thinking. as getting yeah. specific. Well, can okay. I? Just, just as a reminder, this is just the ad hoc committee that we're going to meet once yeah, this week. So, so we haven't, we haven't, we haven't formed, we're not forming the legislative, legislative committee, yet, committee yet. So that will be forthcoming. Would it be possible to, for whomever's kind of starting this to receive input from council members? Is that I think that's what we want to do. No, here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. individual council council members could express their opinion to that committee. Okay. Uh, that probably would be helpful as a start. Via email. Via That's email. That but, okay. Yeah. We all have the same information. Send something in in the next couple of days. We'll sit down, pare it down, get the RCW language together, and put a one pager together and yeah, get just it ready. Don't for expect responses. If you're if you're emailing the full council, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But we can't all be emailing back and forth. Gotcha. And having yeah. more than so it'd be a, it'd be a one way, and then and then the ad hoc committee will make a recommendation and will present it to you on the 16th. So I think Tom and I, and then Jason. Is that right? I defer to the seniority of the uh, you know Mr. Romero, but you I think he defaulted to you. <laughs> I defer to your seniority. You tell me. Uh, Right now, I think that you have some unique insight for the okay. people that you're going to be happy to push it. So. Happy to do that. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. I'll be calling you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. So, so uh, no executive session. No so. executive session. One item that I did want to uh, bring up is the fact that we have not yet chosen our Eastside Fire and Rescue uh, Board. Romero is on the Eastside Fire and Rescue Board as appointed by last, uh, last week, or excuse me, last year's council. Uh, so there is a meeting that is taking place uh, this Thursday at four. Uh, it's essentially up to the council. You have the option. All council members can go. It's a public meeting. Uh, there's nothing that is going to, uh, that's critical that's gonna be voted upon. Uh, but uh, just wanted to make that 
available to you if you wanted to potentially name someone as an interim person. Uh, I didn't want to uh, dissuade you from doing that, but uh, the, the full uh, discussion would normally take place at the retreat for that. Uh, we'll have staff there. Uh, Romero will be there representing the city's interests, et cetera. But wanted to bring this up. Yes, so, and I, I didn't realize that we were selecting the chair and vice chair at their February meeting. Originally when I said we should discuss this. So I was the alternate last year on um, the EFER board. Um, and I did have a quick discussion because Tom uh, Hornish has attended some of those meetings as well. Um, I wanted to peel myself back um, right away just from, I have a lot going on now. So um, Tom said he'd be willing to step in if someone else is also interested in sitting in that position. Um, now would be a good time. but. To um, our city manager's point, everyone can attend. It's a public meeting. I, I would so. suggest if you have interest, come Go. Thursday at yes. four o'clock. No, no, no. This is just interim. We'll actually make that selection. I think it's I think it's easier to make the selection for the um, the committees and this board as a collective whole, so that everything gets parsed out evenly across the council. Um, but I thought this was the easiest way to contend with this upcoming meeting. So. And then um, pick is tomorrow night. Um, I know that uh, Council Member Stewart and Council Member Ross are going down. Um, the pre-pick meeting is on the Voter Rights Act. So if that is of interest to you, you might consider attending the pre-pick, which is at 6. I just come in. We need to leave here on the earlier side. <laughs> the deal is 4.05. Yeah, I would suggest meeting here at like 5, but we can discuss. Um, I think it's easier. Right. Okay, that's all I wanted to bring up. Thank Great. You. All right. Anything else? Good. We're adjourned then.